detective agency's private eyes on cheaters. Christina Bull feels that her longtime boyfriend disregards both her and their daughter. Racked with heartache, Christina calls cheaters to ascertain an answer. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Yeah, it's been five and a half years. Things have changed dramatically. We used to have a really strong bond, intimate type of relationship. You know, we were really close. I mean, it was, there was a day that didn't go by where we didn't spend that quality time together in a relationship, and it's just like, it's, it's just different now. Kareem, age 45. A caterer accused of feeding his girlfriend a load of bull. Cheater's intelligence positions a squad outside the suspect's workplace. Sometime in the afternoon, an unknown vehicle approaches and parks next to the suspect's car. A while later, Kareem emerges from the office building. The suspect greets the driver, an unknown female, with a smile and a warm hug. Kareem puts his charge into his car and starts to get in himself. Then changing his mind, the suspect runs across the lot to a nearby liquor store. Yeah, Kareem is a good father, you know, but lately something's got him distracted. He's starting to neglect his fatherly duties. You know, he doesn't even see his daughter. She doesn't go to daycare, so most of the time she's home and he's leaving early in the morning. He sees her and he doesn't see her at night, you know, so he's just totally neglecting his time with his family. It's, it's, it's not like he's really neglecting her. It's just he's trying to make it seem like work is more important at this point. He's starting to keep secrets. He's not being very honest and very genuine about things. And I know when he's lying, he, he can't lie. So I could tell something is going on, that there's a lot of space and a lot of distance between us. Like we're kind of just falling apart and he's just trying to lie to cover up whatever it is that he's hiding from me. And it kind of pisses me off, you know, because he always said that family was the most important thing. Kareem comes out of the liquor store with a package in each hand. He opens the car door and then gets in. The unknown woman kisses the suspect while stroking his bald head. Kareem's dome drops out of view. However, the suspect must say something funny because his guest laughs and smiles. Finished with a front seat wrestling match, Kareem climbs out of the vehicle and opens his lover's door. With his hands wrapped around the woman's waist, Kareem walks her to her car. The young lady responds with a passionate kiss. The suspect closes the unknown woman's car door, gets into his own car, and heads home to an unaware Christina. If Kareem is cheating on me, I'm done. We've been had the back and forth. I think, personally, our relationship couldn't recover from that because we're supposed to be best friends. And if we're supposed to be best friends, then I don't feel like you should lie to me or string me along if you don't want to be in a relationship with me. So I'm just not sure on how I'm feeling these days. You know, it's like we were on the right path towards our future, possibly having more kids, getting married one day, hopefully, you know? But now it's like we've done like a total 180. Cheaters investigators continue to stake out Kareem's place of employment. Near closing time, the same vehicle from previous surveillance arrives. Presently, Kareem materializes, greeting the driver with a kiss and gets into his own car. As Kareem takes off, the young woman follows. Ignorant of the cheater's tale that tracks them, the two timing twins drive through town and arrive at an almost empty parking lot. The young lady, now identified only as Tony, gets out to join the grinning suspect. Arm in arm, they cross the street. Kareem and Tony enter a lounge. After settling into a cozy booth, the pair spend some quality time conversing and cuddling. After some time, Kareem and Tony make their move out of the bar. Holding Tony's hand, the suspect escorts his sweetie back to her own vehicle. Kareem kisses Tony passionately. He closes the car door and sends his date on her way. As Tony drives away, Kareem gets into his own car for the drive home to a forlorn Christina. Cheaters agents continue the stakeout of Kareem's workplace. Upon finishing work for the day, the suspect leaves his office. Kareem travels through town with a cheaters detective covertly in tow. 
The suspect turns into a parking lot where Tony waits for him. Kareem gets out, goes to his companion's car, and greets his lady love. Holding hands, the pair walk across the street to a small restaurant. Inside, they sit at a small table. The suspect hugs Tony, and they share a few kisses. The kisses continue as Kareem and Tony get up to leave. With arms locked around each other, the suspect escorts his maiden back to her chariot. Not wanting to end the night, the lovers spend their last few moments together kissing by Tony's car. Kareem can't seem to get enough. The suspect gives Tony one final goodbye kiss. As Kareem jauntily steps into his car for the ride home, the cheaters team begin their final step in wrapping up the case for an inconsolable Christina. Coming up, The Confrontation. After discovering the suspect's true nature, Cheaters makes the call to Christina to disclose the details. Worried about the loss of her relationship, Christina summons the strength to face the dreadful discovery. First thing I'd like to say, Christina, is thank you for coming out this evening. You know, I understand it was kind of short notice, but um, let's just get right into this. Christina, we begin our investigation outside of Kareem's workplace. A few moments later, we see this unknown vehicle park. A while later, that's when we see Kareem walk across the parking lot. You made up with some bitch in our car? And meet this female, yes. They make out, they kiss. He then this puts- This got to be kidding. In the passenger side of his Cadillac, not before he says, hold on one second, he jogs over and runs into a liquor store. That's when we see him come out with some beers. Making out with this hoe in our car. Yeah. Well, I gotta sit at again. home or ride the bus home from work and What the So this is making sense. You see her laughing and stuff, I mean, inside of the vehicle that you two share together, correct? Exactly. This motherfucker talking about he working and shit. He caking up with this hoe. Christine, I'm going to stop right there because you can kind of see her face. Have you ever seen this woman in your life? No, nah, I don't know that bitch. So you don't recognize her at all? No. Nah. Okay. Continuing on with our investigation, Christina, on this day, we're outside of Kareem's workplace. A few moments later, that same unknown vehicle arrives. It parks. So they've been meeting at his job. At his workplace, yes. Mm -hmm. That's correct, meeting at the job. That's when we see him come out dressed in all black clothing. He goes over to the Cadillac, gets in, and he drives away. That's when we see her vehicle back out, and she follows him. As our detectives tail the two of them, they drive for some time. Mm -hmm. As they follow each other, Cream gets a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Christina, tell me if you can remember this at all or even this day. Okay. Obviously, you can see he's not doing what he said. Exactly. After finishing up the phone call with you, this woman, who's dressed very nicely, they go and they enter an adult lounge. That's when we get internal surveillance of the two of them sitting together. He just how lovey dovey caked up with this hoe. He is. They're the drinks together. They're kissing. They're being very romantic, almost like they, this has been going on for some time. I wonder if this bitch know about me and our daughter. And that's what we're going to find out. Christine, at this point in time, we have gotten intel from our detective. They're at an adult lounge. What? Together. So he, he's spending money with this hoe tonight, then? Yes. Okay. That is correct. They're in an adult lounge together. If we get on the road right now, we can meet our detective at the location, get some intel, we can go from there. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right this way, please. Let's look for our detective. He's really out spending time with some other woman when he has me and a three-year-old daughter at home. I just, I just don't get it. I just can't believe this. I'm pissed. I completely understand that. All right, we're just gonna wait on our detective. Sit here for a minute. Here's our detective right here. How you doing, Gomez? Okay, they're inside. All right. A bottle of wine, they're drinking. They've been here for a little while. Let's go inside and get them. All right, you ready? Everybody out. It's a little dark inside. It's a little dark inside. Be careful. All right, follow me in. Let's go. Right there. 
right there. Right here, right here. What the is this? My bitch. Who the is this hoe? Talk to you for a second. Did you know that she's been with this man for five years? Five years? Yeah, they share a house know. together. Who is she? That's his Who girlfriend of five years. Who the is you? Coming up next, the conclusion. Okay, they're inside drinking. They've been here for a little while. Right there. Right here. Right here. Who the is this? Here. So you had no idea? I had no idea. Yeah, they have a three, they have a three year old daughter as well. A three year old daughter? Yeah, that gentleman up there, Kareem, he's a three year old daughter. Where is he at? Where is he? Take it outside. No, Work where's the out. bitch at? Work it out outside. Now, tell a bitch to come outside. Listen to me. Why the f you holding out to me? Listen to me. Let listen me go. To me. Listen to me, baby. Let me go. I'm what you talking about? What you talking about? I'm a strip club. Bitch, you ain't get what you had to strip club with this hoe. Well, when you got a mother family at home, where the bitch at? Is this you guys? Huh? Is this you guys eating dinner together? Yeah, that's my man! What you talking about? That's my man! She's Guess been... what? She... You have to come out with me, bitch! Hold on, hold on, hold on. This hoe. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Do you have anything to say, Kareem? Don't tell me. Kareem, what about your three-year-old daughter? This is actually who I'm with now. I'm gonna take care of my daughter. daughter. I'm gonna take good care of my baby. But he my man. You can get that out of my face. That's going too far. Wanna fight? She run up on me, I'm a slack ass. Christina, listen. Man, listen, you. listen. I think you owe her some answers, Kareem. Listen, you got a daughter, you've been daughter. together for five years. Me and her been going through. Oh, you been oh, 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 going oh, through. Oh, with this bitch. Can I you on these like her? Huh? Hold on, baby. Don't pull. Nah, you don't. Bitch, I will snatch all that motherfucking weed about your head. You know what, bitch? I'll snatch it off my damn fucking bitch ass. Now what? Bitch, now what? Run up! Run up! Run up! Wait, 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 stop grabbing her. Just this talk is my to her. Baby. Don't grab me. Grab mother, man. Exactly, so respect so her. Tell me. No, I'm respecting her. I'm, I'm your baby's mother, but who the hell are you up in here with this hoe? Baby, it's over with. It's a wrap. What the it's f you wrap. mean? It's a wrap. We can't be together no more. Get the camera out my face. Out my face. It ain't her fault, it's your fault. What it the ain't got to do with her. It ain't got to do with her. It ain't got to do with her. It's your fault. What the you better bring your I'm ass up. work. Been at work every day. Come. Come. No, you ain't because you with this hoe. Come. Come on. I don't even know her. How would you? Oh, How bitch, he you? don't know you. Don't you know need him. to go home. Oh, no. He can't. He leaving with me. Oh, hold up. We've been going through hold up for four about years thing. now. Four years. This ain't bitch, just about me. This is about her. Come on. Come on. Show me what you made of. Come on. Show me what you made of. Come on. You going with this? You go I've been, minute, I've been trying. Hold on, let me tell her. Listen, baby, listen. It's over with. I'ma spend my, but my you time with her. Man that I'm, telling, I'm telling you, I'm telling you now. No, you gonna tell I'm me now, telling, I'm telling you now. You this is who I'm this with. This old wretched ass hoe. Oh, yeah. wretched! Look at you. What the fuck you guys are home, bitch? You had a strip club with the same hoe. I'm killing you. With you? Huh? You take this raggedy black mother with you then. It don't make no mother. Never mind. Goodbye. Yeah, Call it what you want. Cause you really got me Stop. I was gonna be taken care of, I bet you that. Ass, Before you leave, what did he tell you? Did he tell you that he had a girlfriend? No, I didn't even know nothing about you. That's what I'm talking about. You oh, stunned and front. You don't even know, this bitch don't even know about me and your daughter. How long has this been going on? It's been going on for like For four months? This year. And he didn't tell you anything at all? No, he didn't tell me Well, if I were you, I'd be more pissed off at him than I would at her. Go on and ride with that bitch. Christina, listen. I don't listen. wanna hear that much. Brand new to you. What the we you ain't been close. We ain't been close like that. We just ain't. We got a family. We gonna still have a family. That don't well, mean that like we gotta be together. Man your responsibility. I'm gonna do that. You That's could have told me. Right. You know what? I, I wanna. I wanna. I wanna. No, no, no. Bitch, ass there. What, bitch? Get down, motherfucker. Get down. Oh, bitch, I would dive bitch, on your whole ass. To talk to your mother. I don't you. want him. Kareem, why'd you lie to both of these girls? She knew. Bitch, I knew. I knew. 
Did you I know. say I do? You knew. Yeah, I told you the whole oh time. Oh, my God. Remember that. You got a family at home, but you out here bullshit with these hoes. I don't even mother with kids. What you talking about? Then you bring Don't cameras you around know. here? Because Why you would you cheat, bring them up to the... Because you cheat. crazy. If you could have been a real mother man and just kept it real with me and told me what was going on, why you, why you in leave with your hoe? Nah, you ain't going nowhere, bitch. Get away from my car. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Come on, man, let me roll. Get on out. Nah, you ain't going nowhere. Get on in then. Kareem, you have nothing to say at all. No, I ain't got nothing to say. Get away from my car. Me. You got a three-year-old daughter, man, with this girl. Three-year-old daughter. You got nothing to say. That's what I'm talking about. Let this pussy go on. Go on with your pussy. Hey, watch your backs. Watch your backs. Angered and disgusted by the events of the confrontation, Christina grapples with the consequences of losing her boyfriend. Later, Cheaters divulges how she deals with the pain. But now, meet Amber, a companion who comes in to explain her side about the time she was caught on Cheaters. Uh, Lamont and I were chilling at the lake after we had lunch. And we were just drinking, you know, not laughing, making jokes, you know. And all of a sudden, I hear banging on the window. <laughs> and it's his girlfriend in my heart, like, stop. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, is this cheaters? What is going on? It was just so dramatized. It's so hard to explain everything. It was very shocking the whole day. It seemed like something from a movie. What the? What the? Open this door. Open this door. Open the door. Open. Hey, wait, hey, come on. Open, open this door. Open the door. Open the door. Okay, I'm calm. Open the door. No, you ain't. Man, open this door. Look at you. Calm down. Man, open the door. Unlock the door. Don't be afraid. Open the door. I got a question for you. Me and Lamont's relationship was just friends. We were friends. We hanged out every now and again, you know, not all the time. You know, when I get free time, I might call him, hey, you want to do something, you know? And, you know, he know every time I call and say, hey, you want to do something, I want something in return, you know? <laughs> My time is not free, he knows that. That's all it was. I didn't know, he never told me about a girlfriend. He's paid a couple of my bills, stuff like that. So it never was a problem to me. I don't know nothing about you, little mama. I met him at the bar, okay? He spent money on me, and that's it, that's all. I don't know nothing about none of this. All I know is he can't pick me up, and he gonna take me back where he got me nah, from. he not taking you, no. Nope. You know, this No, y'all trifling. The f up on the why you come look at the evidence? You know, I ain't gotta look at I don't know what you're talking about. Lord, if you didn't do anything wrong, why are you backing up? I'm not backing up. Yeah, you are. No. How would I go about not being a other woman in the situation. I just can't believe everybody or what they had to say because I it, it was another girl that they were watching besides me. So, you know, I didn't care about it because he wasn't my boyfriend, but still at the same time, you know, I don't I don't have anything against his girlfriend. You know, and he had me out there having to fight with her, you know, and stuff like that. And I really you know, so I'm really not too much giving in to meeting anybody. I'm just sticking around with who I know. <laughs> Infuriated by the insensitive actions of the suspect, Christina and her daughter have moved in temporarily with her family. Despite the situation, the suspect, Kareem, insists that no real damage has been done. The suspect denies that he still sees the companion. When questioned by Cheater's producers, the suspect's companion, Tony, refrains from answering more questions. This is Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheater's. Katrina Anderson smells trouble and calls on cheaters for help to determine what or who her gambler boyfriend does in his off time. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. 
In the beginning, our relationship was like A1. Me and Money were like best friends. He always came home. I never had to worry about him being out too late. He made sure he gave me a call, you know, he cooked, cleaned, bring me gifts. But all of a sudden, things have changed. Like, slowly but surely, it just changed. And, like, out of nowhere, it's like, he's a, str he's a stranger. Like, I don't even know who he is now. I mean, he just not the money I knew. Money, age 30. A professional gambler accused of bluffing his way through his relationship. Cheater's elements converge on the home Katrina shares with the suspect. Sometime later, an unknown vehicle arrives. The suspect, otherwise known as Money, emerges from the house with a purse slung over his shoulders. Money gets into the sedan and, shadowed by the cheater's team, the suspect and his ride drive to a restaurant. Well, he has this best friend that he always hangs out with. For some strange reason, I never met him. But, I mean, quote, unquote, he's with him all the time. They hustle together, they gamble on the games, like, when it's time to meet him, you know, he always be cool. Well, yeah, you gonna meet Ken today, baby, but it's like he bring him around while I'm at work. Like, why he can't come to the shop? I do her. I mean, it's open door. You can come in. But no, I never met him. But that's, he's always with Ken, you know, his best friend, quote, unquote. We had a great understanding. He was always coming home. He always checked on me. He brought me flowers, ran me bath water, had rose petals, cooked food, clean house. Like, he was always bringing me gifts here and there. Now, I barely even see him. And I can call him, it's a problem. He's always gambling, like, he's never there. He don't even give me a hug. I mean, we ain't passing with each other. Like, I'm always out, he's in, I'm in, he's out. The pastel-wearing boys eat lunch together. Surprising cheaters investigators, Money slides his arm through his man friend's arm as they saunter back to the unknown male's car. The two men get into the car for a drive back to Money's pad. Upon arrival, the suspect gets out of the car and walks into his home, ending that day of surveillance. If I find out Money's cheating on me, I don't know what my reaction's gonna be. It's, I mean, I know for a fact it might be just real ugly, like, I have no tolerance. I have zero tolerance to foolishness and dumb, dumbfounded people. Like, I, I just don't know what I do. Like, I'm be hurt for one. I just hope y'all don't find nothing. Like that he's doing something. I hope he's with his best friend and not cheating. Like, I mean, it's gonna be real ugly. It's gonna hurt me. Cheaters detectives continue the stakeout. The same vehicle driven by the suspect's buddy arrives. With a different purse on his arm, money sachets out to the car and away they go. A cheater's mobile unit covertly tails the vehicle to a bar. The two go inside and seated inside, money and his boyfriend, now identified as Ken Cartwright, enjoy some quality time together as they sip their cocktails. After some time, the two men leave Money pauses at the car to get some man love. Cartwright hugs and fondles Money by the car. The suspect and his man Panion return to Money's home, ending the day with Katrina none the wiser. Keeping account of the suspect's routines, Cheater stays glued to the stakeout. After a while, Cartwright pulls up. With his purse in hand, Money gets in. The lovers travel across town to a bar. Upon finding a table on the patio, a half-dressed Money and his beau scoot the chairs closer to each other. After a bit of time, Money leans close and wraps his arms around Cartwright for some cuddling. A bit later, Cartwright leads the suspect back to his car. The men travel through the neighborhood to the suspect's domicile. Money goes inside, ostensibly checking to see if Katrina might be home. After a quick check, the suspect returns to Cartwright's car. Money, quite certain his secrets remain, walks his companion into the house. Later, as a disheveled, half-dressed Cartwright leaves, Cheaters prepares to rake money over the coals for an unsuspecting Katrina. Coming up, the confrontation.
With all suspicions confirmed, Cheaters convenes with Katrina to expose the suspect's secret activities. Despite all her fears coming true, Katrina prepares for the reality of her circumstances. Katrina, you came to us for a few certain reasons this evening, and I just wanted to elaborate on those. Tell me a little bit about what's been going on with you and your boyfriend, Money. From what I understand, you guys have been together for two years. You share a home, mm -hmm. and there's been some strange things going on. Can you elaborate? Yes, now me and Money, we've been together two years. The first couple of years, you know, the first year was okay. But as we got off into the relationship, like, a lot of things started changing. So are you ready to see what you come up with? Might as well. All right. So, Katrina, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. Look mm -hmm. familiar? Mm-hmm. Okay, a few moments later, this silver vehicle pulls up, stops right in front of the house. That's when we see money. That is money, correct? Mm -hmm. We see money get into the vehicle. As they drive, they arrive at a restaurant and a male steps out of the vehicle. I'll stop it right there. Do you recognize him, that guy in the blue shirt? Not really. Not really? Are there, is there anyone from his work that he would normally his go best, out to lunch with? He always be with his best friend. That might, yeah, he's kind of fat a little, yeah. What's his best friend's name? Kenny or Ken or something. So this could possibly be Kenny or Ken? Yeah. All right, well, continuing on, they go into this restaurant and they sit down at a table. Then when they leave, they're arm in arm with each other. What the is it? They return to the vehicle. We see that male get into the driver's side and he gets the passenger side. They leave the restaurant. That gentleman drops him off at the house and he walks inside. One thing if two guys go out and get a bite, but why were they holding, you know, well, arm in arm? So close. Like, what the f is that about? Yeah, well, that's what we're going to find out. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> oh my God. Continuing on with our investigation, Katrina, on this day, we are outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see that same silver vehicle pull up. That's when we see money come out. He gets into the passenger side of the vehicle and they drive. They arrive at a bar, the two of them get out, and we see, that's a purse. We see them walk into a bar, <laughs> they sit down and they hold hands at the table. They leave, they go out to the parking lot and that's when we see him hugging this man. Oh Lord, no. And before I, let you turn around, they also do that. Gets back into the vehicle with this gentleman and they leave the bar parking lot. He then drops money off at the house and he walks inside. So this is getting completely strange. Katrina, on this day of our investigation, we see money in the house wearing no shirt with a purse. He gets into that same silver vehicle and they leave. They arrive at a bar. That's when we see money get out. That same gentleman. They go inside, and during this meal, Money receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you can remember this day, let alone this conversation. What's up, Money? What you doing? I'm like, what's up? Yeah, I just seeing what time you were going to come to the house. I told you we are going to go out to eat. I'm over here, you know what I'm saying? With my partner, I'm doing this fantasy football. What time are you coming to the house? Like, I you always doing something. Baby. Baby, chill out, baby. Don't, don't start this today, all right? Baby, all right. I love you. <laughs> I love okay, you. then. I love, I love you. you, too. All right. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. After finishing up that phone call, completely lying to you, he embraces with this gentleman. Now you see his face, eyebrow piercing. Does that look like Ken or Kenny? This is best friend, supposedly. The two of them get up together. They leave the bar. They return to the residence. That's when we see money get out. He goes into the residence, comes back outside, and brings this man inside with him. Hell no. A few moments pass, and a while later, that gentleman emerges with no shirt on, walks out of your home. He gets into the vehicle, and he leaves. Man, where is he? This where is what is I want to do. At this point in time, I think you've seen enough. Why don't we go ahead, get on the road. We know exactly where they're at. Money actually went and picked that gentleman up and took him to a restaurant that's nearby. Are you ready to go confront these two? Mm-hmm. All right, right this way. Let's go find him. What is it? Right there, sitting right next to the entrance. Right there, right here at this table. What the f is y'all doing? So what the f is you doing up here with this dude? What the f are you doing? Coming up next, the conclusion. Man, where is he? <laughs>
<laughs> Money actually went and picked that gentleman up. What the <laughs> is Al doing? What the <laughs> is you doing up here with this dude? Hey, what the is you doing? Money, who's that was your man was your man was what? Money, who's that? Bitch, who, tell him who, who I am. This? Tell him who I am. Chill, bro. Grab her, grab her, grab her. Tell him who I am. What is bitch? Money, who's this? This is his girlfriend of two years that he lives with. Really? Did you know that? Really, money? Don't touch the camera, old boy. So I got a question for you. Uh, are you? Nice right? tripping, bro. Money, where are you going? Oh, uh, no, nah, y'all hugged up now, bitch. Money, where are you going? Bitch, don't walk out now. Man, y'all yeah, tripping. Bitch. Bitch, bitch you want a hoe? You want a bitch? Bro. You want a Get away from the car. Chill, man. Bitch, where we go? Bitch, where we go? Bitch, chill, bro. Bitch, ain't got nothing in this house. You want to be like me, bitch? This what you want? And what's your name? Ken. So, Ken, why uh, why would you do this to, you know? I didn't know he had girl. nobody. Bitch, what you mean? You don't know. I didn't know he had nobody. <laughs> I didn't know he had What you mean? You didn't know he had anybody? Uh-uh. Get away from the cars. So, you had no idea. Where are they going? Oh, y'all running now. Y'all hoes running now, huh? Where this bitch is? He said he had no idea. They're running down that way. They're running away. Bring the vans over. Come on. Let's go. So you hoes gonna run. Just like some pussies. I got more nuts than y'all. Man, stop following me with these cameras, bro. For real, man. Hey, what's up with these? I don't know, bro. They tripping, man. Where you going, man? What's up? Dude. I just have what, a couple man, questions for you. What me with their cameras for? For what word? What's because going on? Because your my... girlfriend hired us. Man, he was running like that. Are you serious, bitch? Your name's Ken, you said, right? Yes, yeah, my name is Ken. All right, so Money, can you tell me a little about what happened, man? Are you man? serious? Man, what happened? I, man, leave me alone, man, Are you bro. Serious? I don't, man. Yeah, man, y'all better get her, man, for real. What's up, you man? Can be me, you can never be me, bitch. You can never be me. This my homeboy. What are you talking about, man? What so you mean? gonna run up on me up? like that, man? What you mean? We weren't even hugged up. We just sitting there. What you mean? mean? Y'all hugged up, bitch. Don't run up on me, bro. You got what you gonna do? Man, y'all better get up, man. What you talking about? Man, you what you talking about? Up. Oh. Just talking about, yeah. Tell me your side of the story. Can I just talk to you for a minute over here? What exactly happened? What you mean, what happened? I've seen everything. She hired us. We've been following you guys for some time now, and I've seen you guys go out for lunch. Okay, seen, what that mean? We're going out for lunch. you guys, you know, What's get a little closer to each lunch? other. Bitch, limp ass hoe. Limp, yeah, stop bitch, following me, man. Bitch. Yeah, you like hoe. Man, stop following yeah, me, bro. Yeah, I need to give you some, bitch. I'm going to give you these tens man, on your head, stop ho. following me, man, with yeah. these cameras, bro, for real. Yeah, bitch, I'm going to give you these tens, hoe. You want to... Bitch, I'm gonna give you one right here. Stop following me, man. Yeah. Man, move for real, yeah, man. Yeah, don't move now, bitch. I mean, do normal friends that our guy friends kiss each other when they go to lunch? Y'all ain't, ain't saw us kiss because we ain't kissed. Really? I'm you sure saying, about that? Yeah. You're gonna keep lying to me? Yeah, I'm well, lying about what? I ain't gotta lie about nothing. Man, move for real, bro. Stop following me. Yeah, I need to get paid, bitch. Y'all think y'all gonna do this shit and don't pay me? I got you guys on videotape. I've had people. You ain't got us. Let me see you guys. You like, want to see it? Yeah, bitch. Where's the, yeah. Where's the iPad? This at? what you looking for, bitch. Nah, I don't want this that. what you looking for, huh? I don't want that. That's yes, what you looking for. I don't want that. Yeah. I, I know. Man, chill, bitch. bro. Man, you talking to, bitch? What you talking about? I know it. Man, I don't even want to talk to my mom. I know it. Quit running, well, bitch. Better follow me, for Cause, bitch, are you gonna do somehow? Hey. You ain't got nothing. Nothing. Oh, you ain't got nothing. So you're not. You, are you gonna keep lying to me? What's this? I don't know what that is. That's not you? Okay, what that okay, what that mean? Why are you squeezing on his butt cheeks? Homeboy. The homeboy? Yeah, that's a homeboy. So what you talking about? Come on, man, let's go, man. Stop talking to me. Yeah, what is bitch here? What is bitch here? Come on, man. What is bitch? Man, move! Move, get out of my way, man. Bitch, I spit on you hoes. Uh, Open the door, out. bitch. Open the door, ho. Yeah, you bitches some ho, ho. Yeah. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that. I know. Hey, let's get you out of here. They're calling the police right now. Come on, let's go. Everyone, load up. I had no opportunity to get anything from the two of them. I even tried to talk to that guy. His name is Ken. That is his friend. And he said that. The best friend. Yeah, he said that he completely lied and yeah. had no idea that you existed. And then he completely lied to me, said they weren't doing anything. I had to show him 
our evidence and he still like, come on, of course they're not going to admit it because they pussies. What's next for you, Katrina? Oh, I'm moving on. Like, he's kicked to the curb like a bed, head like some trash, garbage. That's what he is, garbage. I take that out every day. Following the chaos of the confrontation, Katrina tries to wrap her mind around her boyfriend's sexual proclivities. Later, Cheaters explains her mindset. For now, Tegan discusses what life has been like since the night she was caught horsing around on Cheaters. Mike and I met on an app called Tinder, and I guess it's like a hookup app. And so from there, we just kind of met in a few public places and hung out a few times. He never really said he had a girlfriend. I mean, I kind of assumed just because of the phone calls I heard him take, but I mean, I didn't really care. We were just hooking up, not like we were in a relationship or anything. What the What the Are you are you kidding me? What are you kidding me? What the really? Are you kidding me? Who are you? What the is this? Who the are you? What the What the there's people everywhere. Is that It didn't matter. What the f all these people everywhere? Who the f oh, what the f is yeah. this? Well, it would have been nice if he would have told me that he did have a girlfriend so we could have met more discreetly. It was pretty awkward not having clothes on and knowing that there was cameras in my face. But um, he immediately started calling me after he and his girlfriend went their separate ways. And I mean, I just didn't take his call for a couple of days and then he explained to me everything that happened, and I just kind of let it be, and then we started seeing each other again. What the f are you doing, bitch? What the f Oh my god. Who the hell is she? What does it Look even at matter? Slut. What does Suck it even matter? Who the she is. Get okay. The oh my god. If you would just do something besides, like, maybe just lay there like a pillow princess, what does it matter? Are you? What the f is it? Dude, what is who the hell? What the Okay, Mike, who are all y'all? What Let's, the f is no. it? This is cheaters. The reason why we're here is because she, she called us because she thought you were cheating cheaters, on us. Cheaters, cheaters. that's obviously yeah, you're a cheater. Oh, wait, so you called them so I can be at work late every other day. Work working late. on I working. actually am working. Me and Mike both agree that we have a very strong mutual attraction. So we still see each other from time to time, and it's a mutual agreement, and that's really all. At this point, I mean, I'm really not looking for a relationship. I'm not looking to be with just one person. I work full time and I go to school full time. So those are my main focuses. And uh, I just kind of let it be. Disgusted by the deceitful dealings of her boyfriend and his BFF, Katrina moves out immediately following the revelations of the confrontation. The suspect, Money, declares to Cheater's producers that he and his companion keep a strictly platonic relationship. Money claims he can't be gay if he likes women, too. The suspect's companion, Ken Cartwright, takes a different tack when questioned by Cheater's officials. Cartwright claims he still sees the suspect on a regular basis. Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Nikki Ross notices a recent change in her boyfriend's demeanor. With alarm bells ringing, Nikki comes to Cheaters for help in solving the mystery. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. I've never been cheated on, but my mother, in the past, I've seen her get cheated on, and even when she didn't want to admit it, you knew, like you could tell, like he wasn't, the guy was never there. He was always, oh, I gotta stay late at work. He'd come home, you know, smelling pretty like a bar and other girls perfume and just things like that. Like kind of like almost what Dylan's doing to me now. He's avoiding me. He's not spending time with me. He's making up excuses and different, like almost like lies. Dylan, 
age 26, a graphic artist accused of turning his love into a caricature. After an intelligence briefing at headquarters, Cheater's detectives deploy to the suspect's place of employment. Around lunchtime, Dylan leaves the premises. The suspect, followed by a cheater squad, arrives at an office building where an unknown female awaits him. Dylan drives to a nearby fast food joint. The pair order food. Not forgetting the dessert, the mysterious woman gives the suspect a taste of things to come. Well, in the beginning, we, like I said, we always made time for each other. We were always after work, during lunch, weekends, everything. Every chance we got off, we would be together, even though there was like a 30 minute distance. We always had time for other. Now, though, he doesn't even want to come over if I leave days off. He's just kind of like, oh, I have errands to run. Oh, I have something else to do. He's cold towards me. He doesn't spend time with me anymore. He doesn't even buy me, like, little gifts. In the beginning, he used to always buy me little jewelry, and he'd come up to with flowers. I mean, they'd be, like, half wilted, of course, you know, falling over, tossed around the car, but he always was sweet like that. And now I'm lucky if I even get a, hey, what's up kind of text. Like, I'm some type of friend of his, I call him, he doesn't pick up. Or it goes straight to voicemail, and he'll call me back, oh, I'm sorry, babe, I was, I was doing some, I was getting lunch. Like some, oh yeah, you're catching a movie by yourself. Really? You're gonna catch a movie by yourself. You didn't go to the movies or get lunch. You always go with me, so why are you suddenly not going with me? The suspect sits at one of the outdoor tables with his lunch date. Dylan savors the meal with the young lady as he caresses her back. Sometime later, the illicit pair finish the meal. Holding hands, the suspect and his date get into Dylan's car. They drive back to her office. As the woman walks toward the entrance, Dylan drives away, ending this day of surveillance. I mean, we'd be sitting in the car driving somewhere. We used to take road trips all the time just to kind of just drive and listen to music and be together. And I mean, we'd play songs and it was just such a happy time of my, of my life. And now it's, we sit in the car and we don't do anything. I just kind of sit there and stare out the window. We don't even play music anymore. And I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but I don't, it just, it really hurts because that was our thing, you know? We cuddle, we have little nicknames for each other and now we don't have anything. He doesn't touch me. I have to be the one say, hey, do you want to go do something? Hey, do you want to watch TV together? And He's like, oh yeah, sure, that, that's fine. Like, <laughs> where did everything go wrong? What happened? What changed between us? <laughs> the stakeout of Dylan's workplace continues. Sometime during the day, the suspect leaves work. Cheaters detectives note the familiar route Dylan takes. He arrives at the office building of the previously unknown woman whose identity remains withheld. The pair drive a short distance to a nearby hotel. After some time, the suspect and his lover emerge. The lovebirds get into the car. The suspect makes a quick stop at the drive through After grabbing some food, Dylan returns his companion to her office building. Carrying her food, the young lady walks back to her office. The suspect drives away from his secret liaison while his girlfriend remains unaware of his clandestine activities. Working late into the evening, the cheater's team finally spots the suspect leaving his office. Dylan picks up his companion at her office. The pair drive away with the cheater's mobile unit in hot pursuit. Dylan and his hottie make a pit stop at a well-known courier business. The suspect holds his maiden's hand as they walk back to the car. Followed by cheaters, Dylan beelines it directly to a hotel. It seems obvious what will soon happen as the duo enter the establishment. After a while, the suspect and his other woman leave again holding hands. Dylan puts the pretty woman into his car. As the suspect returns his mystery mistress to her vehicle, cheaters sends the signal to wrap up the investigation and call on Nikki. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that Cheaters has collected all relevant data, headquarters contacts Nikki to deliver the case facts. Terrified of losing her boyfriend, Nikki prepares herself 
for bad news. Nikki, as you know, we have conducted our investigation, but I just want to forewarn you before I show you what we've come up with that some of the things you're about to see you might find disturbing, they may upset you, but it's just for your request and really getting you the truth about what's going on with your boyfriend. Okay. All right? So, Nikki, we begin our investigation outside of Dylan's workplace. That's when we see Dylan walking, goes over to his vehicle, gets in, and he leaves. As our detectives tail his vehicle, he arrives at an office building and picks up this unknown female. She gets into the vehicle and they drive away together. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at a hotel. He opens the car door, escorts her out of the vehicle. Does Dylan open up car doors for you? It's been quite a while. It's been quite a while? Probably about that same year time frame you started acting a little different. Wow, okay. Well, right here I see them, you know, getting out of the vehicle. He's being very, very chivalrous to this woman. They go to the hotel walk inside, they then leave, and they arrive at a fast food establishment. During this time, Dylan receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is audio from that phone call. Tell me if you can remember this, even this day, or this conversation. Right yeah, there. do you see any flat tire on his vehicle? No, but I see a liar. Yeah, I see the same thing. So with that being said, after completely lying to you, Nikki, he gets back into the vehicle, finishes his lunch with this complete stranger, and he returns to her office and drops her off. That's when we see her get out. She walks inside, and Dylan departs the premises. On this day of our investigation, Nikki, we are outside of Dylan's workplace. A few moments later, Dylan emerges, he gets into his vehicle, and he leaves. As our detectives follow him, he picks up that same woman from her office. He then backs out of his vehicle, departs the office, and arrives at this print store. What? So we see the two of them inside at the desk. It looks to me that, like they're ordering something. What are they going to order? That's I what mean... we're going to find out. So after finishing up at the print store, they then drive and arrive at this hotel. They walk in together, arm in arm. Again. Sometime later, we see them emerge holding hands. And again, he opens the door for her. Yes, he's being very chivalrous, this complete stranger. And he returns her once again to that office. How long has this been going on? He's doing it now, he's doing it this much. I would think this is excessive. Nikki, Dylan has picked up the same female again. Our lead detective on the case is Gomez. He tailed them to that same print shop. We get on the road right now, we can go and bust him. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to find out what he's been doing all of this time instead of being with me, some random female. Yeah, we're gonna find out a lot more than that. Right this way. Hey, Dylan, what the f are you doing? Um, hold on. Oh, wait, uh, move back. What no, the f is that? I'm what the f is this? What is work. this? You're picking up thing for work? No. Hey, give it to me. Hey. What don't, is this? Don't don't touch it. Shut the f up and get out of this. Don't touch it. Hey, hey, don't you. Get out of my face, what is man. this? Dylan, you say something to work? Uh, no. Oh, my. Oh, you. You, Dylan. Hey, hey, you big. Bitch. You. All right, let's go outside. Go outside. Go outside. Go outside. Go outside. Hey, Dylan, I have a question for you, man. What, what happened? Who's this other girl? That's. I've been seeing her for a while. You. Come here. You. Girlfriend you've been with for two and a half? Crazy. She's crazy? Yeah, look. Give me my. Wait, look, you think it's funny? It's not funny. You're a guy. Man. That's your job. My guy. Don't. That's my boyfriend. I've been with her for two and a half. I've been with her for two and a half years. I've been with her for Coming up next, the conclusion. Hey, Dylan. Your girlfriend you've been with for two no. and a half? Crazy. Yeah. Get your straight whore. It's you? This is, no. That's not you? Oh. 
getting a hotel room together. Y'all get these cameras. Out. This isn't this isn't you either. Man, I'm not doing. You sure? Do Bitch, I didn't know he had no girlfriend. Did you know that this was his girlfriend? No, I never knew he had a girlfriend. Man, get out of here, man! Get out my face, man! Where the f do you think you're going? Ass. You, Dylan. Is this you with him getting some fast food? Uh, yeah, that was me the other day. But Sing he didn't come here, no friend. How long have you guys been We've doing been on this? and off for a year. For what? For what? what do you How long have you been with her? How long have you been with her? Like a year? A year? Two and a half years you've been together! Hey, you're tripping! No. <laughs> tripping! Get the f out of here. You, Dylan! I They've been together for two and a half her. years and he's still with her. So if, well, any, if like, anything, I'd, I know be, not living I'd be a little bit because... pissed off at him because, I mean, they're, uh, they're in the Asian relationship. He played you in like Two and a half Get years. your hands off of me, bitch. You. I told you, you weak. I don't want to be with you no more. Excuse me, what? I don't want to be with you no more. You don't want to be with me no more. No. You don't be that whore rather than me. Could you please not stretch my shirt? You, Dylan. Like, he's talking about moving in with me and... Well, let's like, go talk to him and see uh, what's really going on. I mean, I think he's playing you and his girlfriend. Uh, can I get my shirt on first? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Did, cool. Sorry about her ripping that off. And can I get some privacy? Oh, she's cheating on me. I haven't been cheating on you. She's assistant at work. She's assistant at work. She just said you guys have been together for a yeah, year. you just told no. me. You just told me. You take your assistant you to a hotel? And we're going to lunch. You're going to lunch. You guys kiss when you go to lunch? No. Do you know every single person you go to lunch with, Dylan? Huh? I was whispering. Oh, You're whispering. She had no, no idea way. that you existed. I'm not leaving. Come on, baby. You. Come on, baby. What are you gonna do? Where are you gonna do? You're just gonna leave? You gotta leave. Like, you gotta run away. Y'all get out. Bitch. Bitch, you shut the. He's leaving go, with me. You. I gotta. Shut up. How again. do you know that he's not? How do you? How do you know that he's not gonna do this to another girl? You don't have to. You're not gonna You don't have to talk anymore. You ass. You cheating on me. Let's go. Two and a half years. Cheating on you. Alright. You can get this. You got nothing to say, Dylan? Get, come here! Get in! No! This bitch is crazy. Are you running away? You're this running away crazy. from me! No! You get leave from me! Dylan, before you leave, can you just can you just explain her? I'll get the cameras out of your face. Can you just give her some answers to why you did this? Shame. I told you why? it wasn't working out. Why? I'm sorry it had to happen why? like this, but... No, you're I not! Told you, you're, you know what? F*** you! I Everything you. about you. Dylan, why'd you do this, man? There obviously had to been a mistake that you made. You don't seem like you're a bad person. Her. No, he is a bad person. He cheated She's on me. Crazy. He cheated on me. But obviously, you, why were you with her for two and a half years then? And why I've were been you trying to tell her I didn't want to be with her? No, you didn't. You didn't be avoiding me. Avoiding me, Dylan. Yeah, you didn't get the sign? The sign? Oh, I'm supposed to get a sign. I'm supposed yeah. to get, oh my god, Dylan doesn't want to be with me anymore. Because, no, you've been telling me you're in busy work. Oh, I'm helping friends out. Oh, my buddy's in a bad spot. He's missing some time with him. You he haven't. Was. Oh, is that your buddy? Yeah. Your buddy. That's your buddy. She needed help with the your car. Your girl on the other side. Sir, he hasn't told me nothing about her. Has he ever told, told you that he loves oh, you? Yeah, he tells me all the time. Excuse me. Excuse me. How long have you been with him? For a year. Oh, Year. I've been him for two and a half a years. Months. Two and a half years. Okay, well, he told me he so was he's been cheating on he not only me, but cheating on you too. You don't seem to care very much. No, I don't. You don't care? Oh my God. Really? Yeah. He's tripping. I'm not you cheating. cheat on her. I help me. I help the girl you fix her. It's okay. Let's do it. I again. help yeah. her fix her tire. Have you engaged in sexual intercourse with this woman? No. No? I saw you go into a hotel. Is that right? You can't even admit that you're with her. She can even admit it. Wow. Okay. You sure you take we'll him home? We'll talk about this later, okay? Get in the car. I gotta go to work. I need to go buy me another shirt. Look at her crazy ass. Guess what, Dylan? We're over. Just you guys like lost him. all of this. He he over. He's with me. Oh, oh. Uh, see how long that lasts? Suck it. Suck it. Ass. I mean, you, you hear it from, from his own mouth. So...
Nikki's fears come true as she struggles to comprehend the suspect's actions. Later, Cheaters informs you as to how Nikki copes. But first, John comes forward to clarify what lengths he has gone through and efforts to try to repair his relationship with his wife, Tiffany. You know, seeing her rush in, just the look on her face, really. I mean, I knew I was in trouble. I mean, it was, it was the gleam she had in her eyes that she was just hawking me down at that table. And I just got up and that's, I mean, the cameras were everywhere and just kept on trying to walk. Just, I, I wanted to leave the situation. I didn't want the embarrassment. I didn't, you know, I didn't want any of that. And I just snapped. If I would have eliminated, you know, drinking that night, none of that would have happened. What the f is this? What is this? What is this? What is what? Can I talk to you for a minute? What is that? Bitch. What is that? What is what? What is this? I'm playing poker. What are you talking about? Oh, where's that bitch that was hanging all over you? Shit, you. man. You bitch. Hey, why are you tripping? As, uh, as far as Lucky goes, I mean, she didn't really have that much to offer me that my girl didn't. I mean, I was just going through problems at the house. You know, we just kept on fighting and, you know, problems of, you know, me, me cheating and stuff like that. And, you know, we just we were fighting at home. And so I just went over there and started rapping to her. And I don't know, we just kind of hit it off. but. It was just smoke and mirrors, really. I mean, I knew there was nothing further than just, you know, me just going over there and having a little good time. What is she mad for? Put that thing up in my face. Sweetie, hey, hold on. Hey, hey, hey. Let me get at her. No, Let me get, get at her. What? I'm going to you up. Oh, hell, you not. I'm going to you up. You not. I bet. Put me up then, bitch. Put me up then, bitch. Put me up. Bitch, hey, get the hang of it. Bitch, what? What? Bitch, what? Bitch, yeah, bitch. Put this on TV, ho. Put this on TV, ho. Since the confrontation, you confrontation, no, I haven't talking to Lucky. I haven't even gone, you know, to the club at all or any club for that matter. I am, you know, trying to make things work with my girl and the kids, because I mean, that's my family. That's my whole life. I really do love my my girl and. You know, it, it hurts me that I've hurt her so much. I let her have access to my Facebook, whatever. I mean, whatever she needs, just to know that I'm not trying to, you know, be sneaky and have somebody on the side. And she is all I need. Disgusted by the length of the deception, Nikki Ross immediately cuts off all contact with the suspect. Nikki feels grateful for not having moved on to the next level with the suspect, considering the circumstances. When approached by Cheater's producers, the suspect, Dylan, had few words, most of which were too vulgar to repeat. Cheater's producers could not reach the suspect's companion for comment. Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Please meet Bryce Paul, a videographer on the edge. Feeling as though the lens to his relationship has become foggy, Bryce requests cheaters' help in clearing the air. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. In the, in the beginning, man, when, when we first got together, everything was great, man. Um, you know, Amber was, she was like a, kind of like a straight edge person. And then just all of a sudden, this, this weed thing came and she just wanted to smoke weed. And I, I, I didn't understand where it came from or, or why it even came about. But, you know, um, I thought we were, we were both on the same page. You know, she was working. So I figured she didn't want to lose her job just as well as I didn't want to lose my job for smoking weed. And I don't know who introduced her to it, but ever since then, it's like, that's how she thinks about it every day, is waking up smoking weed. Amber Butler, age 31, a daycare worker accused of babying another man. After getting details on the suspect's schedule from Bryce, 
Cheaters headquarters dispatches a squad to the suspect's workplace. The suspect finishes her shift at work. A Cheaters mobile unit tails Butler through the neighborhood to a convenience store. After a quick stop to pick up a couple of beers, Butler gets back on the road. Followed closely by the Cheaters team, Butler arrives at a restaurant. The suspect gets out and walks to the front door. Butler returns to her vehicle a few moments later with an unknown man. They sit in the car and smoke. One, one day, man, we, well, we, uh, we left church, and I, I, I kind of felt that it was a problem then, but I didn't address it. But as soon as we got out of church, we got in the car, she started rolling blunts. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? We still in the church, on the church parking lot. And she, you know, she, she rolled a blunt, and, and before we can get out the parking lot, she started smoking the blunt. So I'm telling her, hey, you know, you got to put that out because we're in church. And, 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 and the next thing comes out of my mouth is, well, hey, let's go around the back and have sex. Like, at the church? Like, seriously? And I mean, it was kind of weird, and, and it, it kind of it kind of pissed me off, to be honest with you, because I didn't understand it. I thought she was playing, but man, she was she was she was really serious. So one night I decided that I was going, you know, I was going to try to surprise her with some tickets that I got to a concert. So I went over to her house, and she told me she was at home. So I just felt like, you know, if I was a man, I could just surprise her. When I walked in, I immediately smelled the weed smoke, but you know, I didn't. I just thought I just figured she had just been smoking. But, um, through, you know, when I was there, I, I started, I smelled men's cologne on it. When I hugged, I smelled the cologne on it. Um, I went in the bathroom, I smelled cologne, and I realized that the toilet seat was up. So when I asked her about it, you know, of course, she tried to make it seem like I was crazy and, you know, saying that, I, you know, I'm always tripping. And it just, I mean, it started a big old fight for nothing, man. And, you know, I was just asking questions because, I mean, I seen something different that I, I never seen before. A short while later, the couple exits the SUV. The male wraps his arms around Butler's shoulders as they walk into the building. After satisfying the munchies, Butler and her unknown man leave the restaurant. Pausing by the vehicle, Butler kisses her lunch date. The man leaves. Butler drives home, ending the day of surveillance. Man, if I find out that Amber's cheating on me, I don't know what I'm gonna do, man. I, 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 Put, I put a lot of energy and time into this relationship, man. And if I find out that Amber is, ch is cheating on me, I'm just, I'm probably gonna lose it. I'm probably, I don't, I don't know, man. They, they had to put me in a mental hospital or something. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Cheaters detectives continue surveillance of the suspect's workplace. Butler leaves work. The suspect travels to a quiet cemetery. Butler waits a few minutes. Eventually, the man from previous surveillance arrives. Butler gives him a massive hug. The man joins her in her vehicle. A quick smoke later, Butler and her partner get out feeling pretty mellow. The man, now identified as L.J. Bryant, wraps his arm around Butler. The two survey gravestones. As they stroll to the graveyard, Cheaters agents note Bryant does his best homage to Michael Jackson's thriller, which makes Butler laugh the couple finds a spot to lay down a blanket. The pair finishes their smoke. Then, they get down to the business at hand. Sometime later, after the gravesite desecration, Butler and Bryant walk back to the vehicles. The suspect and her companion kiss each other goodbye. Bryant leaves. Butler returns to the daycare center. Cheater's private investigators stay glued to the suspect. Butler leaves Bryce's house. The suspect drives to a neighborhood park. Bryant waits on her. The suspect and her beau find a park table and bench. The couple sit down to cuddle while they smoke. After a few minutes, Butler and Bryant go back to the SUV. Cheaters agents watch the pair climb into the back seat. After some time, both get out, disheveled and half-dressed. Butler puts her coat on, and Bryant rearranges his attire. After a few moments, Butler says goodbye to Bryant with an intimate kiss. As her companion leaves, Butler gleefully runs around the back of the SUV. The suspect and her companion get into their respective vehicles. Bryant pulls away. As Butler leaves, returning to Bryce's house, Cheaters makes preparations for a meeting with Bryce. Coming up, the confrontation.
now that the suspect's deceitful activities come to light, Cheaters reaches out to Bryce. Frustrated and suspicious, Bryce determines to face down the facts. Bryce, first thing I'd like to say is uh, thank you for coming out with us this evening. Are you ready to see what we've come up with, Bryce? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. All right. So what you got? Bryce, we begin our investigation outside of Amber's workplace. Do you recognize the spot? Yes, I do. We see Amber walk out of that daycare center where she works. She gets into her vehicle, Bryce. It doesn't like she's in a hurry. Yeah, she ran out of there pretty quickly. Gets into her vehicle and drives to a cemetery of all places. A short time later, a silver really? sedan pulls up. She runs out of the car with her arms in the air and jumps on. Oh, now they on. all in love. Now they all lovey-dovey now. Now they're a couple now, right? Okay. In a cemetery. Okay. They, okay. they sit in her vehicle for a little bit. They come out. She's kind of got some, you know, small looking eyes. She's smiling a lot. Why does he keep hugging her? That's not your girl, dude. Not only that, I see something in his hand. I don't know if that's a cigar. He's blowing out a lot of smoke. They're passing it back and forth. Whoa. But she lays down a blanket. They lay down together, getting high in the middle of the in cemetery. In the cemetery? And then he begins to kiss Are you that all over easy? girl. Wow. Wow. They finish up. He has the audacity to walk her back to her vehicle, slaps her on the behind before giving her a hug and a kiss goodbye. Wow, bro, I can't believe this, man. Wow, dude, I can't believe this, man. That's my homeboy, dude, and you... Man, I can't believe this, bro. I understand this I is really hard this, to believe, bro. but you know what? Seeing is believing, and this is 100% per your request to what we got for you. After they finish up at the cemetery, she leaves, he leaves, and she returns to her work. On this day of our investigation, Bryce, we are outside of her residence. When she walks out, she receives a phone call from you. What mm -hmm. you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if what she says right here is true. So she yeah. leaves for the hair appointment. I remember that conversation. So then, after the hair appointment, she drives straight to a park. And who's standing there? LJ. Oh, like she got a damn hat done to me. So she lied to you. They go to a park. He sparks one up in broad daylight in a public they park. They tripping with this. Oh. She's smoking. He's smoking. Indulging in cannabis purely in public, broad daylight. A short time for later. Real, LJ. For real, LJ. He escorts her into the back of her suburban. No, 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 no. They get in together. No, 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 no. Bro, tell me they did not have sex in the back of that truck. I can't say what they did. Please tell me they did not have sex in the back of that truck. But look, Bryce, LJ's fixing his clothes. No, She's putting her jacket back on. No, man, no. Wow. I think you have a couple things to say to both of them. I got a whole bunch of things to say to both of them. They quickly hug each other, give a couple kisses. LJ gets into his vehicle and he leaves. She gets into her vehicle and leaves and returns home. Suck ass. We actually know exactly where they are right now. What? Let's go get him. All right, Let's go, go get him. Just so you know, they're at that same cemetery where they were, desecrating that grave, indulging in the cannabis. If we get on the road right now, we can confirm together. Are you ready? Yes, I'm gonna leave his ass there. Come on, let's, right let's this, go get him. Right this way. Let's Come do on. it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right there, right there. Yeah! Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! What's up, fool? What's up, fool? Hey! Hey! What's up, fool? Hey, Kim Fo's about to go down. I'm going to put these hands on your bitch ass. Man, what are you doing? What is Bryce? What's going on? Oh, no. Coming up next, the confusion. Just so you know, they're at that same cemetery where they were, desecrating that grave, indulging in the cannabis. Yeah, wow, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, bitch. Hey, What's up? Hey, What's up? Hey, What's up? I'm going to put these hands on your bitch ass. No. I no, put no, my no, money no, with my mouth in, homeboy. No. We're going to see what the hell is this. No, what is no, it? No, what is all this? Don't, don't. What is all this? Huh? What is all this? Where y'all get all this from? What is this? What is this? 
That's not, for, that's not for tobacco, what? is it? No. What's up in there? What's that? Hey, hey. What's all this? Hey, homie. Huh? What's all hey, this? What's all this? Hey, man. What's all this? Huh? Hey, yeah, they ain't having a party hey. tonight. Party's hey. over. Party's over. Party's over. Did he just throw my weed? Yeah. He just throw my weed? Yeah. At a, Party's hey, over. at a cemetery? Party's over. All things you aside, we hey, over. Party's over. You just throw my weed? Party's over. Come out your ass, man. This is party's over. I'm Clark Gable with Peace. the show Cheaters. The reason why I'm here is because your boyfriend called us because he couldn't get answers from what was going He's on with you. He's never at home. That's why he can't get answers. I understand that, but... And I kept asking him to participate Same in man, things that I want to do. This, and he why does it. He does. What type of things did you want to do? He won't do like the fetishes. Like, he will come out to the cemetery. He'll set it up nice for me. He's never at home. You don't think you don't you don't think it's a you don't think it's a little bit of a desecration to people's gravesites? No, this is like a fetish. Chill out. You come get chill. No, you take a witch, you You come get chill. Don't sit up here and act like that on the TV. The reason why I'm Don't asking like LJ that. is because he said you guys have been friends for a while. Yeah. He need to, he need to ride out. So, we ain't talked to him. Hey, how you hey. gonna do me like that, bro? What? For real? Man, look. For real? Dude. For real? LJ. For real? Come on. I'm telling you, I'm confiding you? in you? Come on. For real? Come on. For real? Come on. She for been confiding in me too. Out because she you were at home. Too, for real? For real? How you know I ain't at home? You ain't know that. Amber, let me talk to you for a second. Like that, huh? That's how you do. Say, dude. For Get real? Off me, man. You couldn't come and talk to me, man. Back up. Huh? You couldn't come and holler at me, bro. Hey, man. For real? You couldn't come and holler at me. You, you act like this you over a chick. You act like this over a chick. That's yo. my bitch, man. That's my girl. What did you mean? For real? Say, it's a rap, baby. It's a rap. I seen everything. I seen the video. I seen everything. What Smoke video? It's a rap. It's you really rap. want me to pull out the video? I mean. You been having these people follow us? Are you serious with that? Oh, yeah. He been having these people follow us. Oh, now you can follow him. You know, you, yeah. He just dissipates away. Is this hey, guy, if you'd have been your girl, you wouldn't have to worry about saying Are that. Hold on, hold on. Who do you think you're talking to? Who do you think you're talking to, bro? Who do you think you're talking to? Hey, dog, you should have been taking care, care of your mother's girl, dude. I mean, you laid a blanket down. You guys also went out, ate together. I mean, what? This is never home. I mean, he, and don't act like you are just innocent. It's a don't act like you it's innocent. A it's a wrap. It's a wrap. You what lost the best thing you ever had. Party's over. Okay. Party's right. over, sucker. Yeah, all right. All right, I got you. Listen, just, huh? can we just get out of here? It's no, we can't get out of here. Why? We can't get out of here. This is where you want to be. How these people. This is where you want to be. Can I help y'all with something? What, y'all need to go have that dude over there. Go have my man over there. He all upset. Like that. Do you know Fat Boys is in and you finna give away all this for that sucker? No. Girl, please. You just lost out. You lost the best thing ever happened to you. Look this way so you can see so the I best thing ever happened to you. I'm done like, talking for to her. For a year, rap. what do you think I'm he was doing? Her. The main thing I'm just trying to get out of, out of you is, you know, your side of the story and also why this had to happen. I think it's important to work it out, but I don't think he's in the same neck of the woods. Hey, dude with the camera. Hey, man, yo, stop. Hey, man, done with them lies, man. Stop listening to her, man. I'm ready to go, man. It's, it's time to go. All right, let's we're, load up. We're done with her. We're done with her. Load up. Did somebody let her use right her phone? Right this way. Hey, you need to use somebody's phone so you can get home? No, Watch I'm going home with you. No, you're not going home with yes, me. Yes, I am. Nope. Yes, it's I am. It's a two-seat up here with my seat. Yes, I Ain't am. Ain't no room for you. Load up. Bryce. Okay, you you giving them a show. You done what you need. This Look, isn't. You, oh no 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 no. But honey, you the one put on the show, and I seen you. Matter of fact, you was good. You a good actor. You a damn good actor. I thought you was in love with me. You was acting I the whole time. I am in love no, with you're you. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. You put on a you put on a hell of a show. Hell of a show. And hey, be careful on your way home. I don't even want to know how you getting there. Be careful on your way home. Look out for the repo man though. All right, we gotta go. Right. Load up, guys. Everybody in, everybody in, everybody in. <clears throat> Damn. Disturbed by the absence of feelings from the suspect, Bryce owns up to his own emotions. Later, Cheater shows you what he does to deal with the issues. But next, Liz Winters returns to Cheater Studios to maintain that she is now a one-man's woman. I thought Tobin was 
gone on a business trip, and uh, whenever they busted in, it was very surprising. I think I was in shock for about a good five minutes after it happened, and it was just 20 people filled into my living room, and you know, there's popcorn all over the floor. A hole gets put in the wall. There's people asking me questions. Travis and Tobin are fighting. It was really rough to deal with. I apologize. Are you in my house? Oh, I'm in your house because boyfriend found out that you were cheating on him. So what exactly is going on here? You have him in the house that you share with your boyfriend. <laughs> I'm gonna destroy you. What are you even doing here? Because I live here, dude. I don't even want you here. What are you doing in my house? My house. I live here too. Yeah, but it's my. House. Yeah, and you got this piece of crap here, snuggled up on our couch. Oh, what the hell? Piece of crap. Look yeah, who's talking. Crap. Look who's talking. Look who's cheating. You are the cheating liar. I should have been more honest with Tobin. Everything happened with Travis so fast, and I just, I put it off, and I just felt so guilty, and I knew how he would feel, how Tobin would feel once he found out, and I just dug myself deeper and deeper into a hole that I knew wasn't gonna be easy to get out of. And I feel really bad because no one should ever get let on by anybody. It's not right. I'll just get my stuff and you can have this little thing. Oh, you can come all, back all, later all, to get your stuff. You're not getting one, your I'm, stuff with all these people in my house. You're not gonna tell me to leave? Yeah, I can tell you to leave whenever the I want. It's my tell house. Tell me, what are you gonna do? That ain't gonna make me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, get all the security with come, me. Well, come, come here, come on. I got you, I got, I got right wall people, but yeah, come on. You feel like you've gotten everything that you've wanted? No, I want my stuff. I mean, I want to come back here. I called Travis and apologized to him for involving him in all of that and kicking him out of the house. And we met up and we started going on more and more dates and just getting more familiar with us, each other and it's kind of evolved into a relationship that's really tight-knit and close and I think I've changed because I realized the kind of pain that it put everyone through and I don't ever want to do that again. I just want to stay true to one person, this is Travis now. So. Disgusted and angered with his girlfriend and his friend, Bryce Paul makes the ultimate resolution. Bryce cuts off all contact with both parties. When questioned by Cheaters producers, busted suspect Amber Butler exclaims, Bryce is so boring, I was just trying to spice things up, but he's too dull for me. LJ Bryant only says to Cheaters producers, Bros before hoes, yo. agency's private eyes on cheaters. Desmond Hainsey, a full-time student and warehouse dock worker, has concerns about the whereabouts of his girlfriend. Not wanting bad news, but needing the truth, Desmond comes to us for investigative help. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. When I first met Dee, she was a dancer, which a lot of people would put off on, but she is just a great person. Things have changed so much now. And that smile is gone, that glimmer, those hopes for the future, that excitement, it's all gone. D, age 24. An advertisement salesperson accused of falsely advertising to other men that she is a single woman. After a long day, the suspect leaves work and is trailed by a cheater's mobile unit to an uptown area known for its bars. An unknown male waits for her in the parking lot. The suspect greets him with a hug and a kiss. Then the two of them step into one of the bars. She now has basically gone back to dancing as much as she used to and staying out. And the money just doesn't add up. And I don't know if it's just the fact that she's partying and that's kind of where the money is going. I don't believe that at all. The suspect and her date find a cozy spot on the patio. The innocence disappears, however, as the suspect leans in and kisses her new man. 
She laughs and then receives another round of kisses. Usually when I give her a call, when I'm coming back from work or I'm at school or I'm coming back from school, she doesn't pick up. Or when I do get to talk to her, she'll give me excuses, a lot of excuses of she's out with her friends, she'll be back eventually, or she'll be back around this time and never show up. The two leave the bar holding hands as they cross the parking lot back to her vehicle. Standing next to the car, they kiss and make out like a pair of love-struck high school kids. After a few moments, the man puts the suspect into her car and gently shuts the door. Cheaters agents watch the suspect as she drives back home to a waiting Desmond. The situation between D and I now is just, it's nothing, it's, you can barely say that there really is a relationship there anymore. It's kind of like, I'm taking care of a child now. I, I really feel like I'm at my wit's end. I don't want to give up, but there's no part of me that will let her go. But if it's something that comes down to cheating, there's, there's no way that I could keep that going. The investigation day six. Knowing the client will be working late this evening, cheaters agents patrol the area around the home the suspect shares with Desmond. The cheaters team spots the suspect, known only as D, leaving the home with the unknown male from previous surveillance, now identified as Joseph Tyler. A cheater's tail follows them as they drive across town. D and her companion arrive at an upscale bar. They hold hands as they enter the bar. Cheaters field agents spot the duo on the patio making small talk. Dee's companion leans close and kisses her. After a few hours, Dee and her companion wrap up their date. He escorts her back to her car. They drive to Dee's pad. Internal cameras there placed by Desmond catch images of the debauchery while Dee and her date frolic in the living room. They play on the couch a few minutes before moving to the bedroom for the duration of the companion's visit. Cheaters detectives wrap up the night when Tyler leaves. Investigation day 10. Covert surveillance confirms the fact of a date as Dee and her companion leave the home she shares with Desmond. A cheater's tracking team trails the pair to a well-established restaurant. Taking a table on the patio, Dee and her companion enjoy their meal. Partway through dining, Dee edges over to her dinner date and plants a succulent kiss on his mouth. Eventually, the suspect moves to Tyler's lap in order to continue their kiss fest. Dee stays in this position for a while. Sometime later, the suspect and her companion leave the restaurant. They kiss for a few moments by the vehicle before driving back to Dee and Desmond's home. Upon arrival, Tyler begins unzipping his pants. He lifts Dee up and lays her down on the sofa. They kiss for a while before moving to the bedroom for hotter action. Once Tyler leaves, Cheater's agents close the case on Dee's double dealings, returning to headquarters to begin putting together the case facts for Desmond. Coming up, the confrontation. After confirming his suspicions, Cheater's producers contact Desmond to inform him of his girlfriend's questionable actions. Disturbed about the possible results, Desmond stands tall in his quest for the truth. Desmond, how are you doing today, man? Good, how about yourself? Uh, very good, I just wanna say thank you for coming out here. I understand you got a very, very busy work schedule. Thank you. We've conducted our investigation. Are you prepared to see what we've come up with? I am. Okay. As we begin our day of investigation, we are outside of Dee's workplace. She leaves her work, arrives at a bar, meets up with this unknown male. He greets her with a hug. They then walk into the bar, sit at a patio outside, get some drinks, playfully kiss, and sometime later they exit. He walks her to her vehicle, they embrace, she puts her arms around his neck, they continue to embrace for some time. He opens the door to her vehicle, shuts it, she drives away. 
We continue our investigation. We are outside of your home. That's when we see Dee leading that man down the stairs, holding his hand. They get into her vehicle. They arrive at a bar, sit outside on the patio, begin to kiss. After kissing for a few moments, she gets a phone call. Hello? Hey, baby. What are you doing? Where you at? I'm out with Erica right now. Well, what are you guys doing? She's got a new job, so we're just out celebrating right now. Well, uh, I'm going to have to work late, so I was just wanting to let you know that I was going to be a while. But I guess you'll be up when I get home. Yeah, I'll be out for a while. Do you want me to wait up for you? Yeah, I'll just call you on my way home. I'll just call you. It's kind of late. It's already late now, so. All right. Love you, baby. All right. Love you. Bye. After getting off that phone call with you and telling you that she loved you, she then proceeds to walk up to this man and give him a kiss. A few moments later, they exit the bar and return to your home. That's when we see Dee parading this unknown male into your house. He then picks her up, sits her down on the couch on his lap. They begin to kiss. Things heat up a little bit. They go to the bedroom where they stay for some time before he leaves. You all right, man? I know this is really hard to watch, I understand, but I'm just trying to get you through this, I promise you. I mean, we're gonna make just her- have full faith in somebody and can turn around six years, do some like this. So what did Dee say she was gonna do last night? She said she was gonna stay at a friend Holly's place. At a friend Holly's place? At a friend Holly's. Okay, well, with the new intel that we got this morning, that didn't happen. She stayed at that unknown male's house. I got a question for you, Desmond. What time does she usually go to work? About 12. About 12? Okay, it's nearing that time right now. Are you prepared to confront her? I'm prepared. All right, man. Right there. I'll ever be. Then come out. Get your answers from your girl. Be ready, man. Any minute. All right, go, 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 go. There, there, right there. Go, go, go. What's going on? What's going on, D? What the? No, you broke it. D, no. What's going on? What's going on? Here. What's going on? Hey, 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 I'm not talking, I'm not talking to you, man. Hey, hey, bro, like, back up off of me, Hey, I'm not talking to you, man. What's going on? No, no, no. Who the f*** is this, dog? call me later. Like, who is this? That's her boyfriend of six years. Her boyfriend? I'm not saying, though, I don't know. I thought you were talking to you. Hey, bro, hey, bro. Hey, man. Man, I need you. Face. Hey, bro, I need you like, to get my don't, face. Don't run up on me, dog. Like, you don't know me like that, no. bro. Hey, uh, you don't need to talk uh, to her like that, bro. Hey. Bro, you don't up. need to Move. talk to her like that, dog. D, nah. No. Hey, bro. No, uh, What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing, uh, Desmond? No. What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing, uh, are you doing uh, here? I want some answers. I want some answers. Who the f*** is this? Who the f*** is this? This is your friend? This is your friend? Oh. Oh, no. I got some evidence. I got some. Oh. You can call me later. I can call you later? Oh, I can call you later. What's going on? Like Basically what's going on is she has been sleeping with you and lying to her boyfriend for the past couple Who, months. This this guy? No. I don't want to talk no. right now. I want some answers right now. Like this. I'm not I'm not uh, doing this no. with you. Dad. No, you ain't got no. I'm no. not doing this with you. No. Excuse me. Uh she's gonna back up. Doesn't get away from my car. Coming up next, the conclusion. She stayed at that unknown male's house. D. Hold on, D. No, he broke it. That's her uh, boyfriend of six years. I'm not doing this with you. Doesn't oh, get away from my car. Oh hell no! I want some answers right now. Get away now. from my car. You, you no. Over. No. That's what I'm gonna do. You ain't, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going don't nowhere. Don't worry about this. I don't want to talk like this. If you want to talk, we can talk later. That's oh no, we can. Okay? No, we can. We can't talk later. Yeah, we can't talk can. later. Get away from my car. You want to talk? You can talk out. I don't want to talk to you right now. It's gonna be outside. This, this is not how, really? Ooh, this this girl just kind of played you. How does that okay, make you feel, man? Man, man, like I, I met her on my birthday, man. Like I don't even, but she, but she's supposed to be done with this dude. Like I don't want to talk right now. So if you want to call me later, we can do this a different way. I'm oh. not gonna do this. Especially, why would you do all this? She gets a phone call. Oh, this is when she was with you at the bar. Do you love? Dude, D, I mean, you're on the, you're on this damn thing saying you love this back man. Up, hey, no, hey, bro, get your hands off me. Bro, you get your hands off me, man. Bro, you better back up, You dog. better back like, up. Like, you don't even know me like that, little dude. dude. I don't give a like, man. Like, dog. Oh, ooh, you're, you're, a big, you're, a big, you're a big man. You're a big man. You play big, big man? Bro, you better back up off me, Bro, back up off me, dog. Like, you don't even know me like that, son. Man, you, you don't 
No, me. Yeah, yeah. D, what is going on? Who are D? you? I'm Clark with Cheaters, and my question for you is why would you tell this man that you love him when you're out having dinner with this man? Because I do love him. I do love him, but I don't ever see him. So in my spare time, there's things that I want to do. There's things that I might want to get out and have fun. I'm young. Really? Well. Really? That's just my friend, so. Do you remember? Oh, that's your oh, friend? Oh, we're just friends? Yeah. We're just, you're just that's friends? just my friend. Oh, yeah, you're just friends. You're just friends, man. Is that really, really? Yeah. Like, you come standing out of my house, we just friends? Yeah. You, went, you went to these extents to really, to catch me doing something? Like, that's, really? That's Obviously. Passion. Obviously. Yeah. What the hell is going on here? I thought we had something. Six years. Six years, I thought we had something. Six years, but you're never around, Desmond. What am I supposed to do? Bruh. Cameras and everything out here, dog. Do I not take care of you? Is it not all just me and you? What is, what is your spare time? One day a week? Is it one day a week? Is this not what we agreed on? To move past this so we can have a better life in the, in the future? I understand that, and I thought that it would be different. I didn't know that you were going to be gone all the time. I didn't know that it was going to be like this. I didn't know that I would get lonely the way that I am right now. Why? Bruh, I mean, apparently obviously, this is over, Obviously, obviously, I'm... Like, apparently this is supposed to be over, right, dog? So, like, man, let her choose, bro. If she don't want to be with you, bro, you just got to deal with that. I think you owe both of these men an explanation. Okay. Can you back up off me for a second? Let me, I mean, I'm... Bro, like, no, like, hey. Wait a minute, wait. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Man, what the... How much downtime was there between when you stopped having, you know, a good I mean, relationship... I mean, me and him haven't been the same for the last year. So, what am I supposed to do? I'm just not having fun anymore. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm sorry I can't party all the time. I can understand that, but you gotta give this guy way more than a, you gotta give him way more of an explanation than that. You're bored and you don't wanna party? I didn't know party? how to tell you. You knew things were different. I'm sorry. Like, that's all I can say. That's it. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Do you think the fact that you guys share- Leave, that's what you can do. Well, whatever. That's our place. Together, so you can leave. History does repeat itself, and I'm just telling you, if you do this to one person, really? you don't think that you would do it again? First of all, you don't know me, and we, our situation was different. He was not there. There's nothing else I need to know from anybody. Okay, fair enough. So you're gonna end it like this? So what are we gonna do with our apartment that we share together? Like, what do we do? Where do we go from here now? Like, like really? Like I already said, um, you can go find another place. Really? You can go live with him. Really? So, but it's our place, though, so I gotta it's get It's not out. our place anymore, okay. obviously. Okay. All right, Bye. Desmond. See you later. Hey, babe. Get the out of my face. Get out of my face. I'll call you. You're gonna call me? Yeah. Desmond. Can I give her a second? See if she gives you an answer. Desmond, so you want me to come get my but it's our apartment though, right? It's our uh, apartment. Yeah, you can get your So I have to leave, but you don't have to leave. Why, why, Obviously, why me? I don't have to leave. Really? Who's, I think uh, we should both find a different place. You're not going to put my out. Who's first Who's been paying most of the bills? Really? Goodbye. So this is how you the, want to end it. You decide obviously, to do all this if you have to right? go through this, you this can cheat you on me. You can cheat on me. Yeah, you can get the out. Go with your boyfriend. Bye. You're crazy. This is crazy. You don't think sleeping in bed with another man in your boyfriend's bed is crazy, First though? of all, he hasn't been there for a year. What if he did this to you and you were standing here right next I'd to be, me? I'd be upset, but you know what? If I put myself in that situation where I didn't have time for him, he's only human. So what am I supposed to do? Like, what is he supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? I have needs or things that I want to do. I want to hang out. I'm young. Like, I'm not going to sit at home and just wait for him. So if you couldn't tell that there was a problem and I already told you there was a problem, it's you pretty much denying it. Not you didn't like tell me there was a problem. Every time I try to bring up the fact that we have a problem, you want to get defensive. I didn't know it was going to turn out like this. I, 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 I don't want to hurt even, him. I, I'm matter. sorry that I did it this way. I'm sorry that you did it this way. That sounds a little bit better. So I'm you finally, it took, it took all of this to get you to say sorry once. Six years down the drain. Hope you had a good one. You seen enough? Seen enough. Okay, let's go. Load up. Following the ruckus events of the confrontation, Desmond ponders his future. In a bit, cheaters will let you know his decisions. But first, Haley Hall, the suspect in the Calvin Fisk case, returns to give her side of the story when she was caught dabbling with her gay friend on Cheaters. Brian and I, we were just, you know, not thinking about too much else, you know, just kind of trying on, you know, little clothes here and there, just having a good time, you know, nothing too extravagant or anything. And then whenever I saw Calvin come in, and I saw all these cameras and I was just, I was overwhelmed and it was, it was really truly a slap in the face and it was a reality check. What the f are you guys doing? Hey, what's going on, Calvin? Yeah, hey, what's going Calvin? on, Calvin? What the what is wrong? Thing I've done for you? What? 
Get the f off of me. Is this what you what want? You what the f are you doing? What the f is that? Well, I definitely, definitely went into defense mode first off. I said a few things, you know, that I shouldn't have said. I know that I was in the wrong, but at that particular moment, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to be the bad person. I was trying to make Calvin out to be the bad person because of the fact that he put me on blast in front of everybody, you know, in a public place like that instead of just coming to me. Brian, you gotta give me one more second, man. I just need some answers from both of you. I apologize, but hey, but just tell me what's going on. Why wouldn't you just communicate? You're Calvin's That's friend. One of her best friends passed away. Yes. She was she was mourning. You know, Calvin was not there for her. Get the f out of here. Shut up. Tell me this. I caught you guys at a car wash and you come here. Your car, whatever. So what is going fine. on? But what I, what I what? Is, why is, why is, why is why come to me? I love you. I always you were the f You tell me nothing. And you don't never pay attention. How do I not pay attention? How am I not paying attention? I'm trying everything for you. I'm getting you flowers, I'm cooking dinner, I'm trying to do everything that I can do to make you feel better. Me and Calvin, we sat down and we had a very, very long talk. Him and I, we have not talked like that in a long time. I would love to marry him. I'm truly, truly, truly in love with this person. We're back to the point to where, you know, it's just, we're friends again, you know? It's not just like, oh, okay, I'm living with this person and I'm with this person. We're truly, truly friends once again, and I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Devastated by the actions of his former girlfriend, Desmond Haydensey continues to decry the abuse suffered by her hands. Distraught over the loss, Desmond has entered into counseling provided by cheaters. When contacted by cheaters' producers, Dee admitted her part in the affair. However, she points out that Desmond played his part in the collapse of their relationship. She says if Desmond had only been around more instead of always being at school or at work, then I might not have done this. I didn't plan it, it just happened. Approached by cheaters, Joseph Tyler had only gracious things to say about the suspect. He claims, we talked, Dee and me. She's sorry she led me on. I accepted her apology, but I'm not moving her in anytime soon. He says that she'll have to earn his trust again after getting them both caught up on cheaters. Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Lindsay Knight, a bartender on the catering circuit, is concerned about a recent lack of attention from her boyfriend. Worried she may be the victim of a wandering philanderer, Lindsay comes to the one faction known for ferreting out the facts. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. We used to always spend every single Tuesday and Thursday together. We're both service industry, and so we just have weird days off. We coordinate our schedules together so that we have time to spend. If he had to pick up a shift, he was pissed about it, you know, and he'd, like, try his hardest not to go in, and he was like, I don't want to lose my job over it, and they would really have nobody else that can work it. And um, now it's, like, I just have to work. Suspect's identity withheld, age 38. A bartender accused of using his skills at mixology to twerk up a carnal concoction. Briefed with the particulars of the case, cheaters' agents stake out the suspect's place of employment. Sometime in the afternoon, the suspect arrives at work. He grabs a seat at one of the tables in the roped-off section of the sidewalk. Presently, an unknown female joins him. He greets her with a friendly hug before she sits down. We don't need to spend that much time together anymore, and he doesn't feel bad. He doesn't He doesn't even come to my bar to try and see me if I'm working and he ends up having a day off or something. He's just gotten real short and irritable. Uh, we used to always talk about like how work was, you know, and how much money did you make, and now he just doesn't want to talk about it. He's just really short and abrupt and rude. They enjoy a few drinks before his shift begins. Cheaters' operatives note how friendly the suspect gets with his guest. The suspect and the unknown female share a kiss at the table in full view of the public. 
One of my girlfriends was at his bar and just overall got like a weird vibe the whole night. He wasn't really overly friendly and, hey, how's it going? Um, just kind of short, like, hey, what's up? Gave her a drink. And there was another girl at the bar that he was being, she thought, just over the top flirty with. My friend ended up there at the end of the night and that girl, coincidentally, was the only one that didn't get kicked out at 2.15. Uh, when I asked him about it later, he was like, babe, it's just waiting on a cab. It's really not a big deal. Shortly before his bartending shift begins, the suspect wraps things up with his friend. He gives the young woman one last hug and a lingering kiss before sending her on her way. The suspect then turns and goes to work. I'm starting to feel like a pushover, you know, where, I mean, we used to just have a normal conversation and now everything that I question about seems weird. He makes me sound like I'm just being freaking insane. Everything was always laid back and cool and he's like my best friend and it's just not that way now. Knowledgeable of the suspect's schedule, Cheater's investigators continue the stakeout of the suspect's place of employment. Sometime during the day, the mysterious female from previous surveillance, now identified only as Audrey, arrives at the club door and again waits. Shortly after his date's arrival, the suspect himself drives up in his car. The two get in and drive off, followed by a team of Cheater's professionals. They drive to a downtown spot, park the car, and walk hand in hand to a nearby restaurant. Once inside, the suspect and his lunch date grab a table and enjoy a sumptuous meal. The suspect gets a little frisky and shares a few kisses with Audrey. After consuming their meal, the pair walk back to the vehicle. The suspect drives his date to an unknown apartment building. Long hugs and kisses signal the end of their date. Before Audrey turns and enters the building, the suspect runs back to her with a bag. He then drives off to work. As with previous days, Cheater's agents continue their stakeout. Finishing his daytime shift, the suspect exits the building. He only walks a few blocks away to a bar located near his own place of work. After a short wait, Audrey enters the bar. She greets him by sitting on his lap and giving him a quick kiss. However, it's apparent that she holds a job there. At some point, the suspect lets his girl get back to work. He kisses her goodnight and then leaves the bar. Cheater's operatives finish compiling the report for a forlorn Lindsay. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that all evidence points to infidelity, Cheaters gathers the information for Lindsay to review. Stealing herself for the worst of news, Lindsay comes in with all intentions to protect her heart and her feelings. Lindsay, how are you doing this evening? I've been better. I want to say I appreciate you being here. I know you have a very busy work schedule, so we'll get right to it. As you know, you conducted our investigation and come up with some interesting findings. My question for you is, are you prepared to see that? I think so. OK. On this day of our investigation, we're outside of a workplace. Some time passes, and this unknown female arrives. She walks up, they exchange with a hug, and she sits down. They converse. After a few moments, he leans in and gives her a kiss. Do you recognize that girl? That's Audrey. We did probably a dozen catering events with her. She's, I just, we, all the girls have like loosely kept in touch and gone and had lunch together probably once every couple months. So she's, I mean, she definitely knows we're together. So we, you know this person on a normal basis? Yeah. Wow, I'm terribly sorry, but I just want to get you through this and right. have no, the best I, outcome from it. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to know too. Okay, I, continuing on, they exchanged a few kisses at the table. And a while later, get up. He then embraces her with a hug, one last kiss, wow. very long kiss. It's, it's so f***ed up. Continuing on our investigation, we are outside of the workplace. A short time later, we see arrive. He's on his cell phone. He walks down the block, gets in his vehicle. Our detectives follow him. He arrives at a bar. 
a short time later, Audrey, Audrey again. arrives. They exchange a kiss, and she sits with him at the bar. They exchange words back and forth. She does a little bit of a flirtatious move. He's having a drink, and then all of a sudden, he gets a phone call, runs out of the bar. Hey. What's going on? Uh, where are you? I'm at work right now. I thought you were off on Tuesdays. Well, I am normally off on Tuesdays, but I got called in. I've been calling you all day long. I know, I know, but I've been busy all day long. They had this happy hour here at, up at the bar, so that's why I got called in. And I had my phone on silent, and so I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't hear your phone. I mean, I, you know, I should have just texted you much and everything that I was at work. Okay. But, um, I will talk to you later. Okay. Love you. Love you, too. I was calling him all day long. He just completely lied. Our friends are trying to make plans for the weekend. I, I just... Sorry for the... No, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Slow down. It's okay. We're going to finish this and get going, I promise. After finishing up the phone call, he returns back inside. She clears his dish. They exchange a kiss. He walks back to his vehicle and goes home for the evening. Listen, a lot at once, I completely understand. And no matter what, I promise you that you're going to get through this and see a lot more at the end of it. I know it seems terrible right now. You've only seen the worst of it. Now you get the best, which is to go confront this man and, you know, make him accountable for his actions. So long story short, are you ready to go do this? I think so, yeah. All right, then right this way. Let's go. Okay. You ready? The yeah. main, main thing is, is talk to him and try to get your answers. If anger comes out, let anger do its thing, but, you know, try to get your answers. I'm waiting on his phone call, and then we're going, so just be there. It is right there. Gomez. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. All right, bye. You ready? Awesome. There he is right there. Come on. Let's go. The conclusion. Okay, they're inside this club called Kismet. And they're sitting on a couch together. Hey, hey, no. Who's that girl in there? Uh, that, that girl's a friend of mine. Do you kiss all your friends? No, I sure don't. Where is hey, guys, that guys, guys, come on, come on. You guys need to leave the property. Please, please. please. We can't have that here. Please, please. What the What, is, what the hell is all this? Don't about? listen. Oh, hold on. Your man. What the f is this? What the f are you doing? I saw you here? a month ago at lunch. So what? So Talking what about me is your problem. When did you think that we broke up? Um, a long ass time ago, because he told me y'all have been broken up for a while. That's he pretty, a that's pretty much now. Up, actually. What's the like, real story here? This is like a is, week ago. The story is, is that we're just hanging out, having some lunch. No. It was just kind of giving me. We're just hanging out. Why wouldn't well, you do that in the first place? With well, all? first of all, communication. Uh, yeah, communication is everything, and I've been trying to tell her. But, no, you, know, you haven't. Do you just keep telling uh, me yeah. that you're busy at work yeah, and you're picking you up shifts? I told he you. Said yeah, these well, guys have been done for a long time, so I don't know. That is totally news to me. You were on a date with her. Do you recall this Lying night? You went and saw her at her work. Do you remember work. that? Yeah, I, I went by there because they're friends. I was there hanging out. Absolutely, but then out of nowhere, you left there and you got a phone call. 
From me. From her, and you ran out of the said you restaurant. Work. And I guess you still have Tuesdays and Thursdays off. Well, I did. No, I, I think you still do, and I, I guess you've been hanging out with her. Probably the same time he's telling you that we're broken up, and he's on you the phone lying to me. You just need to hear one me. part of this video, Audrey, really quick. It's right here. The I love you part, I think. Although that was a lie, too. The I love you? What was that? Was that a fake I love you? No, I mean, I still love her. I don't know. It's been Four months okay, since four I started months, seeing you, months, okay? So months, we've been months. seeing each other a while. Okay, How long have you been months. telling her that you loved her? You and I It's been going done. on for it's four, over. wait a minute, four months. Okay. It's been going on for four months. Easy, easy. No. Okay, just back up. No, no. Let us that's, just, No, that's yeah. so no. You could have told me four months ago when you felt like something was going wrong or whatever. Just freaking mm -hmm. communicate like a human being. Okay. Well, you have to like go behind me. Right now. No, We're go done, behind me with somebody that we worked with that is one of my girlfriends. No. Okay. Well, we're not friends anymore, bitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're obviously. Thanks friends. for clarifying that. Audrey, you if he what? was with you, what if he does this to you with someone else and you don't know about it? You know, he's not going to do that's this to me because no, that's clear. I'm that's actually not going to satisfy you are. him. No. He can't, he can't be satisfied. You don't think he's going to turn around and do this to you, too? I mean, it's a woman like me. So I don't know what to tell you, girl, but. No. no. Okay. No. That's so, how I feel. I'm that sorry. Was a really I mean, I'm telling to tell her. Hey, 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 get the out of here, Get the out of here! You f you! Get the out of here, you stupid bitch! You whore! You're the stupid whore! Go home alone, baby! Now that I have you away from all this, man, I mean, honestly, like, what, what's going through your mind right now? Man, what can I say? I got, you know, I, I do love her. I understand okay, so that. I understand that. Fucking out. I have no, I, you know, no excuse. I can only explain it so many different ways. You know, and for her to catch me like this, I mean, so be it. I guess I, I am caught. Uh, I am a cheater. I guess I had a bad judgment call on that. But. Well, you know what? I appreciate you actually, like, being honest and, like, manning up to that because not a lot of people do that. Yeah. And uh, I, I give you that. I mean, it's one thing to cheat on someone, but to actually not be, you know, cocky and arrogant about it and, uh -huh. and, and understand. And you seem like you're very perceptive of what's, you know. Yeah, I'm just sorry that everybody had to find out this way more than anything. Well, I'm going to get out of here with my man, and you could go home alone. Have fun. And we'll see who's the yeah. jackass. Yeah, have fun Later. with that worthless piece of All right. With that being said. Let's um, get out of here, babe. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Face it. Are you serious? We're done. Let's get a cab. That's not a man right there. That's that's someone trying to figure out how to be a man. Get the f out of here. We're calling a cab. We're trying to go home tonight, okay? Care, We're gonna go home together. Lindsay's gonna go home alone. You guys can go home, okay? You got your shot. You're done. You got it. No, no, it's really pathetic when you talk to the other girl more than you do your boyfriend, and she's just a young, stupid girl that doesn't even get it. Yeah, I think she's a bit intoxicated too, so that usually doesn't really Probably. mix well with a situation like that. But with that being said, do you feel like you've gotten everything you wanted this evening? I think so. I just right. wanted him to come clean, and I guess he more or less did. All right, guys, later. Good luck. Go film the loser who's going home alone tonight, okay? I got my man. What do you want to do? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Why don't we get in the vans and uh, we'll get you out of here. All right? Yeah. Thank Sorry you. Sorry to deal with that. That girl's, that girl's all over the place. Uh, yeah. I think I have claw marks. <laughs> well, let's go take the high road, shall we? Yeah. All right. After the confrontation, Lindsay realizes she has some hard decisions to make. At the end of the show, Cheaters will divulge her plan for success. But now, Cheaters presents Joe Thompson, a day laborer caught up in a player's paradise. Thompson puts out his thoughts on what happened the day he was caught with another woman on Cheaters. We was about to have dinner and Pam did what she always does, bring, bring drama to me. And uh, it pissed me off, you know. I was already going through a lot of with her. And then she surprised me like that. I was so pissed off, I just, I didn't know what to do. He's got a white shirt on. Say, what's going on? Is this how we doing it? Mm. Hello? 
That's how we doing it. Yeah, that's how we doing it, my. It's how we doing it. We just eat. Calm down, bro. We just eat. No, we just eat. What did you do? I seen the video. What did you? I seen the video. What did you? I seen you. 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 Damn. Like, all the times me and Tay was out chilling, we wasn't just chilling. Y'all only caught us chilling. You know, I was actually looking for work. She was taking me to look for work. Um, everything's, it's, it's, it's great. You know, I'm working now. We, we get to do more stuff without having to sneak around. And uh, Pam, I still see her, you know. She, we in the same neighborhood. You know, I just, I just go my way, she go hers. No hard feelings. I did hook them up, but me and Joe always had something. You know, we always oh, had an attraction. We, I knew Joe uh, long before I hooked her up Summer with him. Summer. She don't know how to treat him. Bitch crazy. She always acting crazy. Don't, don't put your hand on him. 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 Do not don't put tell me what to do. Him. I'll put my mother. Don't Sometimes keep going with this story. Crazy. No, crazy. I'm crazy. She, you she, you he, he lost his job. She don't. She don't try to. She don't try to help him find a job or nothing. I can't even tell she, you. Okay, well, obviously. What the? Right. Can't get no job. You know, I'm looking for, towards the future. Um, Tay, I, I really love her. You know, um, I want to build a family with her. And um, you know, everything happens for a reason. It was a mistake you know, bring me back on, you know, coming on Cheetahs and all that. But as far as my future goes, it's, it's gonna go the way I want it and without cheating. Following the disturbing revelation of her boyfriend's betrayal, Lindsay Knight remains convinced that her decision to leave him was the right thing to do. Despite the PR nightmare, she believes the situation won't affect her employment. She says most caterers don't like drama at work, so they probably won't put us together. But I have a good reputation, so it shouldn't affect my work. Admitting that circumstances could have been handled more delicately, but claiming it's not the whole story, the suspect puts forth, you don't know what it's like dealing with Lindsay. I had to check in with her every 10 minutes. Just so controlling. The companion, Audrey, declined to comment further on the case. Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Tiffany Crawford is a young woman determined to keep her family together. Concerned that her boyfriend spends too much time away from her and their children, Tiffany comes to cheaters in her quest for the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. When we first got together, we were always going places, we were always doing things. And granted, this is before we had two children, but even after, you know, our firstborn, we were still doing things, we were still going out. And then now we just had our second and it, it's all changed. It, he does, it seems like he just doesn't want to be around. He doesn't, he doesn't want that life anymore. You know, he tells me that, uh, that he works late, but also I know that he likes to play poker and there's some poker nights that he'll go out and play with his friends, you know. Uh, go out for the night, and I don't mind that. I understand, you know, guys need guy time. Um, but it, I don't know, I just, there just seems to be something off. John, age 24, a windshield repairman accused of ignoring cracks in his relationship. Briefed with the particulars of the case, cheaters agents stake out the workplace of the suspect. Near sundown, John leaves work and drives to a seedy area of town. The suspect and his cheater's shadow arrive at a gentleman's club. John gets out of his car and walks into the strip club. He has cheated on the past. Um, you know, I've actually caught him before, and he is, you know, doing the same stuff, lying. Um, I'm getting blocked phone calls at night from other girls saying that, 
that he's been with them, that I need to leave him, that I'm stupid for staying. But when I ask him about these, then he says that they're just jealous that he's still with me after all this time. When I get these phone calls, to be honest, I get mad. I don't want to believe that what they're saying is true. Um, but on the other hand, why would they lie? You know, I think about it, why, why so many girls? Why would they have tried to reach out to me and tell me if it wasn't true? I mean, how many girls could actually be that jealous? Inside, cheaters' operatives track the suspect as he stands at one of the stages talking to an unknown female. The woman and John converse as she shakes her rump on stage. After a long while, the suspect leaves the club with a spring in his step. John returns home, wrapping up this night's surveillance. I've forgiven John a lot in the past for a lot of different things that he's done, um, some of them being cheating. But if I find out that he's cheating on me again, I already told him, it's done, it's over. I can't, I can't go through this anymore. I can't put my kids through this anymore. They don't deserve it, and I don't deserve it. We deserve to have him there 100% with us full time, and he can't just be running around on me. Knowing the suspect's schedule, the cheater surveillance team continues the stakeout of John's workplace. Sometime in the afternoon, the suspect leaves work. John follows the same route he drove the day before, arriving back at the same strip club. The deceitful boyfriend goes into the establishment where he meets the same dancer, now identified only as Lucky. The entertainer gives the suspect a few lap dances. During his private show, Lucky grinds on John, kissing him passionately. After some time and quite a bit of money later, the suspect exits the dance bar. John returns home to a disconcerted Tiffany. As with previous days, cheaters investigators continue the stakeout of John's workplace. The suspect leaves this evening, headed down the same route back to the very same strip club he visited before. Meeting with Lucky seems to be a regular occurrence. Dropping more cash, John receives more lap dances from his regular lady. At some point in the evening, the twosome sit quietly, kissing at a booth. Lucky even walks John to the exit to give him a goodbye kiss. As the suspect heads home for the evening, Cheaters concludes the case for a betrayed Tiffany. Coming up, the confrontation. Documenting all lies and deceit, Cheaters calls on Tiffany to arrange for her to view the facts. With fear and anger building in her heart, Tiffany meets up with the intention of protecting her family and relationship. Tiffany, I know it's been kind of a long week. I'd like to say thank you for coming out this evening. I know you've been going through a lot with your relationship. But Tiffany, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. My question is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? Yeah, I want to see it. All right. Tiffany, we begin our investigation outside of John's workplace. A while later, John emerges and he gets into his vehicle and leaves. As our detectives follow John, he turns into a strip club and he parks his car. That's when we see him get out, and John walks inside. That's when we see him conversing with this unknown female, and that's when things get a little bit more friendly than I'd say your average customer. He begins to kiss this woman. Tiffany, he gets a phone call when all this is going on. What you're about to hear is the audio from that. Tell me if you remember this. Hello? Hey, what are you doing? Nothing, uh, just playing a uh, game of poker with the boys. Watching uh, the basketball game, the finals. When are you gonna be home? As soon as we finish up this poker game, uh, I'll be leaving, and you know, I should be home in about 30 minutes. All right, well, uh, I'll leave a little bit. Uh, you know how these poker games are. Love you. All right, love you too. See you soon. Bye. I'm pissed. After finishing up the phone call with you, he then returns inside the strip club, and some time passes and he leaves. That's when we see him return home for the evening. On this day of our investigation, Tiffany, we're outside of John's workplace. A while later, 
John emerges after what seems to be a long day. As our detectives follow John, he arrives at that same strip club, pulls in, parks his vehicle, and walks right back inside once again. That's when we see him receiving multiple lap dances in a VIP section of the strip club and kissing this unknown female. And before leaving, he kisses this female and smiles while walking out the door. He then nonchalantly walks outside, jogs to his car, and returns home for the evening. So seeing your money and your honey go to a strip club, I mean, how does that make you feel? It pisses me off. That is not what I work hard for. So Tiffany, after everything that you've just seen, my question for you is, are you ready to go confront John? Let's go. All right, well, listen. I'm ready. We've got Detective Gomez on scene. He's at that same strip club that they're at. It's called The Pearl. If we get in the vans and get to the location, we can bust them. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right this way, please. All right, let's go. Come on, okay? At the very, very back, okay? Watch your step. Ready? They're inside together, sitting at a poker table. What the f are you doing with that ratchet ass bitch? We're done. All right. We're done. done. Go home with that. Bust it up. Hey, John. John. Can I ask you a couple questions, man? You want to go outside for a minute? I just have a couple questions for you. Like what, man? My name is Clark Gable. I'm with Cheaters. I'm just here because your girlfriend hired us. She says you guys have been four years. You have, man? I'm just asking for the truth, dude. That's all. Is that your is that your chick? Don't you have kids with her? It doesn't matter, man. Don't you love that woman? Something like that, but you look like a Clark Kent. Sorry, man. What if you came in here and you saw your girl doing this with another guy? Wouldn't that make you upset? Yeah, something like that. All right, so I just have a question. How did you meet this girl? Coming here, playing poker, having a good time. I understand that. That was it, man. Did one thing lead to the next, though? Because, I mean, I have multiple shots of you guys getting a little bit more comfortable. Okay. Kissing her and... The possibility of me getting with the stripper. Mm -hmm. Does that seem like butterflies and rainbows to you? Absolutely that like, not. Uh, I'm just going to cast a reel and reel it in. Does that seem like a possibility to you? I mean... That look, seems more fetched. It doesn't you know, look far fetched right there. I was just having fun playing poker, doing me. I can understand what happened. Hey, y'all can't come back. What is she mad for? Putting her finger up in my face. Let me get at her. Let me get at her.
hands. Get the 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 hands. Get Talk to you for a minute. That's your, because that's your you guys lady. Are my business. No, we're not. How the f would you Knock feel? Knock it off! How the f would you feel if you were just sitting Knock high and dandy by your damn Knock self? Knock it off! Would you it's feel? It's not Knock about me off. how I feel. Stop. It's about how you feel. You this is a girl. Feel. I don't know how you feel because I'm not in your position. Be that shit on the camera, man. How the f do you feel? Let's just go. How you feel, bitch? I feel good. How you feel, I feel bitch? good, bitch. How you feel, bitch? I feel good. Look what I got. Look what I got. Look what I got. Fuck you. Hey, you bitch. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, bitch. Look at me. Come Look on. at you. Look at me, bitch. Look at me, bitch. Look at me, ho. Look at me. Oh. Let's get in the van. I don't even have to touch you. You do it yourself. Yeah, got it. Back in the van. Dumbass bitch. Yeah. Or that hoe. Bitch. John, do you have anything to say about your girl or anything? About your kids? You guys don't know how real this is. You guys just think it's all make believe in front of cameras. It's not. This isn't make believe at all. It's just about fixing what happened with you and your girl. Okay, so how was all this LED lights? How was it's so this we can little see going on? That's so we can Okay, hear sorry, you. I don't mean to hit it, but I just want to beat it like a damn Congo drum. Hey, I'm not getting anything from you, man. After the chaotic confrontation, Tiffany struggles to understand why the suspect would treat his family in such a callous manner. Later, Cheaters informs you on how she copes with her experience. Now, Brian Bass returns to give more details of the night he caught his girlfriend with another woman on Cheaters. Yeah, during the bust, all that was going through my mind was pretty much just how terrible the last few months had been and just how rough it was on me and how it just kind of tore me apart emotionally. Honestly, I, I uh, saw red at first and I was really, really upset and 
couldn't control my anger a little bit, and it felt like a huge burden was relieved, though, afterwards. <laughs> what the hell? I saw the video. I know what you've been I doing. Didn't do We're just friends. We're just hanging out. This is full. This is full. You had told me that you were going to be at your grandma's today. And this is where you are. I mean, we're just having drinks. We're not doing anything. Yeah, I don't believe you. Yeah, I could have probably done a few things differently to make this relationship work out. Uh, I could have paid a little more attention. I could have worked less. But honestly, I kind of feel like. Uh, we, we hit that point of no return maybe six months ago, and uh, we never looked back. And I can't wait for this to be you're on TV. Ridiculous stuff. I can't wait for this to be on TV. You're pathetic that you did that to me. You're pathetic. 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 you are better than you anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, really ugly ass. <laughs> You're being a mean. Ugly ass. Come on. Push your ass. Push your ass. You're being a mean. Never. 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 After uh, this whole confrontation went down, I actually uh, immediately felt like I needed to drink. Honestly, I just need to get out there, do my own thing, meet new people. Uh, and just uh, never, never quit, keep going, and that's it. Live every day like it's the last. Following the disturbing realization of her boyfriend's destructive behavior, Tiffany Crawford seems determined to hold her relationship together. Tiffany declares that although she forgives him, this will absolutely be the last time. The suspect, John, at first admits he's too embarrassed to talk to Cheater's producers. Then John finally expresses that he has cut off all contact with his former companion. The companion, known as Lucky, only states to Cheater's that she believes the suspect will be back in the club sooner or later. Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Harmony Vance comes to cheaters with suspicions concerning her boyfriend's anger issues. Desperately needing answers to her queries, Harmony begs for help. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. There are times where we may get into it, or it may be something small as I wanted a piece of gum and he didn't give it to me to where he would get so mad to where he wouldn't speak with me for a weekend, for a whole weekend. And at first, I didn't think anything of it, but after so long, I'm, I, it, it just started getting suspicious where it would seem Thursday, we're okay, and then come Friday, there's some reason to be mad and then you go the whole weekend without speaking to me. So we go to, to the same church on Sundays so Sundays, it's usually, you know, Sunday morning, I don't hear anything. Sunday, get to church, I'm there, I don't say anything. And then midway through service, I may get a message saying I look nice or, hey, how was my weekend? And he comes back and he, and he just starts talking to me like nothing happened, like we didn't just not talk the whole weekend. Jay Talley, age 24, a website moderator accused of modifying his relationship by uploading with another woman. Cheater's headquarters dispatches a unit to follow the suspect from his residence. Tally arrives at an apartment complex and enters one of the buildings. Tally emerges from the apartment with a young, unknown female. The two get into the suspect's car. I questioned him about a, a name in a text message that I've seen. I, there's recently, I've seen the name Anthony pop up, and I know generally all of the people that he associates with. And Anthony is all through the call logs, all through mex messages. I haven't actually seen the messages, but there's this new name, Anthony. So when I questioned him about the name Anthony, 
he immediately, you know, made it into a big deal. We didn't speak. So it's really hard. I most of the time try to find my friends, see what they're doing to, to find things to do to keep myself occupied. So I'm not thinking about it because literally I sit at home if I don't have anything to do and I'm and I'm going through my head you know, trying to figure out what went wrong. What did I do? The cheaters mobile unit follows Tally and his charge across town. The suspect stops at a convenience store to fill up his tank. The pair then get back on the road, covertly tailed by the cheater's team. Tally drives to a supermarket. He pulls up in front of the store and lets his paramour out. The young lady leans into the driver's side of the window to give Tally a kiss. After a moment, the suspect hits the road. If my suspicions are true, six years, it's just time that has been wasted for him, for myself. If he wanted to be with somebody, he could have just let me know. So if my if my suspicions are, are true, I'd, I mean, I feel, I feel sorry for him. I will probably lose it. And, and when I say I, I'm going to lose it, I will probably do something I'm going to regret later. Cheater's operatives stake out Tally's residence. Tally comes out, hops into his car, and takes a short drive to the same supercenter he visited the day before. However, this time, the suspect picks up the woman he dropped off earlier. The woman, now identified as Ashley Simon, gets into his vehicle. The suspect and his date head down the road to a nearby roller rink. The pair enter the rink, don skates, and roll around the rink. After some time, the rolling couple remove the wheels from their feet. Tally and his skater girl go back to his car. The suspect then drives the young lady home. Carrying Simon's bag, Tally joins her inside. A while later, the suspect leaves the companion's residence and returns home for the night. As with previous days, Cheater's agents continue with the stakeout of Tally's residence. Sometime during the day, cheater spotters mark their target leaving his residence. Tally drives the now familiar route to his favorite shopping center. The suspect pulls into the lot and waits a few minutes. Simon shortly emerges from the building. The young lady climbs into the suspect's car and the two drive away. Unaware of the cheater's team on their tail, the pair arrive at a bar and grill. It appears as though the two of them have some sort of disagreement with Tally gesticulating derisively. However, once at their table, Simon seems to make up with her man. The suspect receives a kiss from his date. Sometime later, Tally and Simon leave the restaurant. A friendly tap on the behind signifies Tally's affection for Simon. Cheater's agents follow the suspect's car back to the supercenter. Then Tally drops Simon off. And as the suspect leaves, Cheater's agents prepare to collate all evidence for harmony. Coming up, the confrontation. Having documented all deceitful actions of the suspect, Cheaters calls on Harmony to unveil the evidence. Abound with questions, Harmony comes forth to receive her answers. Well, as you know, Harmony, you have conducted our investigation. And my question for you is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? I think so. OK. On this day of our investigation, Harmony, we are outside of Jay's residence. A few moments later, Jay emerges, he walks over to his car, and he gets inside. As our detectives follow Jay, he drives some distance, and he arrives at a supermarket. A short time later, that female walks out, gets into the vehicle, and leaves with Jay. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at a roller skating rink. They go inside together. Internal surveillance shows the two of them skating, enjoying each other. After they take their skates off, Jay puts his shoes on, fixes his hat, and they walk out to the vehicle. That's when we see the two of them get inside, and they arrive at this unknown residence. We see the female get out. He hands Jay her backpack. He carries it for her, 
And a while later, he emerges from the apartment on his cell phone. He gets into his vehicle and he leaves. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of Jay's residence. A short time later, Jay nonchalantly strolls out of his house, walks over to his vehicle, and he gets inside. As our detectives follow Jay, he drives for some distance, and once again, he arrives at that supercenter from the previous day. We see that female, she walks over to the passenger side, and she gets into the vehicle. They leave the supercenter parking lot. As our detectives follow, they arrive at a bar. That's when we see them park the vehicle, they both get out, and they walk inside together. That's when we see the two of them conversing back and forth. They sit out on the patio, and Jay is drinking a beer, and that's when they lean in for a kiss. And Harmony, during this time, he gets a phone call. He steps away from the table. What you're about to hear is the audio from that. Tell me if you can remember this day. Hello? Hey, what you doing? Uh, right now I'm at the studio at the moment. How long are you gonna be there? Probably about another hour or so. I was just trying to make sure that we're still on for this evening. I don't know. I'm not I'm not really for sure because I'm supposed to see my mom today, so. Hey. But if I have time, I, I, I will definitely let you know. I'll Come shoot on. you a text. You can't cancel on me like you did Come last on now. Time. Come on now. I'm, I'm, I'm working. I'm working. Okay. We'll just but I'm going to try my best. Okay. Call me when you get through. All right. Bye. Bye. Finishing up the phone call with you after lying to you, saying he was at the studio, he walks back outside, closes out his tab, and him and that female walk out together holding hands. Before they walk over to Jay's vehicle, he slaps her on her lower behind, and they leave. As our detectives follow, he returns her to the same super center where he picked her up. Jay then returns home for the evening. Harmony, you know what you've seen. My question is, are you ready to confront Jay? I'm ready. All right, listen, they are at a snow cone shop. He picked her up from the Supercenter. They went there. If we get in the vans right now, we can go confront them. Yes, let's go. All right, right this way, please. Right there, the sunglasses on, right there. What is going on? What the is going on? What the is going on here? Why are you here? Who is, who is this? Who is this? What the Wait, who are you? Don't touch me. What is she Don't doing here? Don't touch me. Why, why is she here with you? That's my girl. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is, on, yeah, this is your girl? Let's go. Let's go. Oh, this is like, your girl? Don't touch me. Look at me, me when I'm talking to you. Don't touch me. This is your girl? This is your girl? This is your girl? Then I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Don't, don't be. Watch out. Watch out. Chill. 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 You don't even know me. You don't even know me. Chill. 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 Let's go over here. Chill. No. Let me chill. go. Let me yeah, go. Come on. Let's go. What? What? Ashley, chill. Come, Come on. on. Go over there, chill. Come on. Jay, I have a question, man. Can I really, talk to you Jay? for a second? Really, Jay? Six Why are you years? worried about it? Go on. Six Who years? Because it's my job. That's Six why I'm worried years? about it. Jay? Six years? And this is how it's going to end? Two with some hoe? She looked like she's 15. She, no. she, she, she looked like she's 15 years old. Coming up next, the conclusion. Right there, the sunglasses on. What the? Ashley, I'm Clark Gable with Cheaters. Okay, I apologize. I don't know I'm not who here you to are. offend you. I'm just here to ask you a couple questions. I understand, but did you're you know, ruining things. Did you know that this man had a girlfriend for six years? No. She's a hoe, so she wouldn't know. She don't oh, care. Okay, but that's the kind of stuff she do. That's the kind of stuff she do. Whatever. Whatever. You're mad. But don't he be never, mad at me. But he he never told you that? No. Never at all? No. Because she's not relevant. She's not important. No, I'm relevant. She's a side chick. But he's sleeping with me, though. You're mad. You're mad because he's sleeping with me. Touch him. Ashley, did you guys go, is this you guys? Yeah, that's me. What's your point? My point is why, if you had no idea this guy had a girlfriend and you just found this out, why would you still want to even Because be I love him and I'm pregnant with his child, that's why. You're pregnant with his yes, child? Yes, I'm pregnant, I'm two months. What's your point? Us three. She's pregnant. Us two months three. pregnant, Jay six and six years? Us three. And this is the kind of what did you do to me? Three. We can chill. Really? Are you serious? Are you serious, Rob? Right? Oh, chill. Why don't you chill? Hey, Jay. Jay, come over Whatever. here. Whatever. I'm the side chick, here. but you don't come have no here. baby. Stay in the side chick's position. Okay. Okay. Obviously, you're the side chick. You had to hire them. Six years. You're the side chick. Jay. 
What happened, man? What Why, you did mean, you do what you mean, Why did you do this? Like, how come you wouldn't tell her that you have a significant other? Come on, let's go. Or tell like, her this is all that you have a girlfriend? No, let's go. You're not, you're not, not important. Why don't you touch me? me? You're not don't important. Don't touch me. I don't care if you're pregnant don't or not. Don't touch me. You will lose that baby today. Whether you're pregnant or not, we'll still beat your ass. Well, do you guys know about this? Do you remember taking her roller skating? I got you guys, you know, picking you up at work. Is that where you work? And you yeah. spy on me? Well, she hired us, man, because you wouldn't tell because her the truth. Because you're a liar. You're a liar. You're caught. I'm not, I'm not lying. I love, I love, I want both of y'all. Come on. You're a liar. I'm you not want lying. what? I want both. You want both? I want, I want both. But this is you the dude both? that you want to be with. You want both? I want both. Are you serious? This is the dude that you want to be with. <laughs> Baby, are you serious? This is the dude that you want to be with. You want two? You want two girls? That's the best way. That's the best Jenny? way. Jay, I gotta ask you a Jay, question, I'm gonna man. do you a favor. You can keep that hoe. You can keep her. You can keep her. I want both. I want both. Jay. No. You lost the Palmer, opportunity. You, know, you, know you can you. keep her. We got, we got chemistry. Six years. You, know you wasted my time. We got chemistry. Six what? years, Jay. You got chemistry too. No, it's no both. It's no both. It's one or the other. I'm gonna make it easier for you. You can Get keep the better team. You guys can have each other. No, 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 no. How does that make you feel? My business, your concern. Because I'm doing my job okay, for that person right you. behind you who's this his is, girlfriend of six me, years. Excuse me, sir. Trifling. Off? Let's both go home. You want to walk No, off? there is no both. I've made it very clear. You can keep her and you can keep that little, that little baby that she got growing in her stomach. Little baby. His baby. I don't, want, baby. I don't want none. You're right. And both. how many other babies? How many other women does he um, have pregnant? I don't know. You, you don't, don't know should, because you're six years in, bitch. You should be the one really concerned about it. And I'm so happy that I don't. And I'm so happy that I don't. And that's why you're For this exact same reason. And that's why you're hiring this exact same reason. No family. For this exact same reason. This exact same reason. No family. You're family. No family. This exact same reason. No family. No family. No Know this, uh, whatever the hell Don't she touch is. Me. No, Carmen, you too. I mean, what's up? No, no, what's it's only facing opportunity. I told you, I told you, it's nothing. It's I'm not, nothing. I'm not worried about you. Oh, I no. bet you're not worried, but you're I'm not worried about you. So what? The one that's cheating on you. Oh, right, you're pregnant cheating, by a man no, that's actually, cheating. He's cheating on he's you. He's cheating he on you. Before. Right, right. right. If right. your child saw this, Don't how do you think you would feel, Ashley? That what? she's immature and she's a child. How would you feel if your child knew she's that this ghetto. is the way that she was brought into the world? Well, I by don't know. cheating men. I don't know. I, I never had sex. It's never had sex. She probably swallowed my babies. But... Oh. I never had sex. He's a liar. And th again, this is the man that you want to have a baby with. This is the man that you're with. No, the same one who can admit that he now. got I people am. fighting. Right, so says a lot about you. Am. He can't even admit that he's Hey guys, let's go. Let's go. Everybody out. Y'all are fighting on my property. Let's I want y'all gone. Let's go. Whatever. Let's I'm done. Let's I'm done. The There's no baby. Party. I'm done. Give me the keys. If you don't want to drive off, I'll drive off in your Give me the keys. Give me the keys. I don't have the keys. I lost I just the keys. Saw you put them in your pocket. Give me the keys. keys. And you're still over oh, here? Oh, you're mad? You're still oh, mad? Over here. Yeah, I'm over here. So what's no, up? You're still what? over here? Yeah, get your... Go get in the get, car. Get, Jay, step back for a back. minute. Move step away. back. Move away. Harmony, <laughs> relax. You better relax. be glad, bitch. You, I'll walk no, around you with be you. Glad. I will walk you're around a mother. with you. You're be a mother. Serious. Remember that. You're a mother. Okay. Oh, my God. Don't Listen, touch hey, me. Give me the keys. Dude, don't lay your hands me. off your girl, tie dye man. What are you doing? Don't go touch me. Part. Give me the keys. Let's go. Okay. Go ahead and keep her. After the confrontation, the ramifications of her decision set in for harmony. At the end of the show, Cheaters updates you on how she handles her newly found situation. But next, Derek Erickson bowled straight gutter balls on the day he was entangled with another woman. So when April busted in with the private investigators, all the cameras were in our face. Um, it, you know, it was, it was very surprising, but um, is extremely embarrassing. You know, there, we were in public. Um, I never expected this to happen. By the time I realized what was going on, all the pieces had already crumbled. Everyone had already had their feelings hurt. You know, I just decided to, you know, get Susan in and get out there as quickly as possible. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bitch. Oh yeah. Oh my Hell no. Oh, what is going on? Oh. Baby, 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 baby. Oh, baby, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, 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 oh. It's not what it's not what it's like. 
no, 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 and uh, you know we end up having a lot of alone time. That mutual attraction eventually gets acted upon. Uh, didn't know how to break it off with April, but uh, you know she's a good girl. You know I, I truly loved her, but I just didn't know what uh, what I should do. You're a good girl. I never want to break your heart. I never Go. break your heart. Go. Look, look, I promise. You're my best friend. I promise. With my best friend. Look, she was. Look, she spent two years with us. You could have picked two any years. other girl. I could have. Any other girl. It was not my choice. My this best. just happened. It just happened. It's not my choice, I promise. I didn't want this to happen. I want us to fall in love and stay in love forever, but it just didn't happen that way. So the one thing that I really regret about this whole situation is hurting April. Uh, she's a great girl. And I really do love her to this day. You know, she's hopefully always going to be one of my good friends and uh, knowing that I really hurt her um, and everything happened the way that it did I I have a lot of remorse and regret from that um, hopefully you know she'll forgive me and you know eventually we can uh, be friends Following the disturbing revelation that her boyfriend has another girlfriend, Harmony Vance concludes that she needs to cut all ties with her former lover. The suspect, Jay Talley, admits to cheaters he still wants Harmony in his life. Despite the likelihood of a reunion remaining slim, Talley figures he still has a chance. The suspect's companion, Ashley Simon, only states one thing to cheaters' producers. That other chick, she says, is not relevant. 